Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, we are here again doing our work. Glad to see all of you. And as I do each week and sincerely mean thank you for all the hard work people are putting in the extra hours on this and really keeping, uh, keeping us on track. Um, I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order now. It's 5.32 p.m. and I'm going to take our roll call. Start with you, uh, Ms. Walker. You're muted, Alicia. Yeah. Oh. oh, here. There you go. You're, you're really you're officially here now. Welcome, Ms. Ferreira. Here. Mr. Vernon Jones. Here. Ms. Pat. Here. Mr. Cage. Here. Ms. Owen. Here. Good to see you all. Thank you, Mr. Bockelman, and uh, as every week, uh, Ms. Moisten for being with us and supporting us. And. Uh, Let's see, I'm gonna uh, very quickly go through our uh, agenda review. Um, and I didn't see our, our 217 minutes yet. Is that correct, Ms. Moyston? It is, I just finished them. Okay, so you so guys we'll should be it. receiving them shortly, okay. but not we'll do that next. Yes. We'll do it next week. Thank you. And um, we will uh, go, right into uh, public comment and also check in with our members to see if there are any comments uh, any of the members wanna make before we uh, begin our action and discussion items, which include tonight uh, a, um, an update uh, from our, our consultant group, Seven Generations Movement Collective they will be here to give us an update and we will also take a look at, um, as part of that discussion, uh, our, our timeline to be checking in to see um, what path we're gonna be taking to, to get things done in a, in a timely manner. Um, in addition to that, we um, had a discussion uh, over several weeks, over a couple of weeks, I should say, about uh, community resource uh, proposals and we, we collected our, uh, our thoughts and opinions in sort of a straw poll and just like to come back and look at that again, since this is a critical part of what we're seeing as the CSWG for our work going forward. And then uh, the item of planning uh, for the meeting with uh, Chief Livingstone, which we'll get into when we get to, to, to that moment. Uh, followed by upcoming events, as always, our next meeting date and any other items that did not come before us in a timely manner to work on this evening and then we will adjourn. So uh, given that, welcome again, everyone. I'd like to go straight to um, uh, public comment. Uh, if there are uh, any folks in our uh, audience from the community who would like to uh, make a comment at this point, this is the time to do so and Ms. Moyston will, will recognize you. Good evening. Um, this is uh, Vincent O'Connor. And uh, is, I, I missed the last few words of the chair's uh, comments. Um, is, it, is it now time that I can speak or is someone else been recognized. Now's the time. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if I've in the past made it clear what my thoughts are about the the division of labor that that should um, be instituted between the um, the use of armed um, police officers and uh, unarmed police officers who don't enforce warrants and arrest people on the spot if they see marijuana plants in their homes and so forth. 
Um, but I, I, I want to think this today's Supreme Court argument about a, uh, a, f- a Fourth Amendment issue um, that involved a wellness check, I think is a perfect example of why there needs to be a very serious division between the the use of armed police officers, um, which tragically was required in Boulder, Colorado, and the use of unarmed individuals who don't enforce warrants or arrest people, um, and um, and so forth. Uh, I've I you know I I don't know how extensive the evaluation of calls to uh, 911 or to just to the uh, police business uh, line has been but i i really think that that um there ought to be as there was a subcommittee for um evaluating the uh the applicants to be consultants I think there should be a, a very serious evaluation of three to five years of, of police activities and some determination by the committee, a recommendation as to which activities belong in one sphere, which belong in another an unarmed um, force, which is where both of which are controlled by a somebody who is not a member of either and directed by somebody who's not a member of either. And I, I think it's, um, I just would encourage the members of the committee to, to listen to the, um, to the report on the, the, the oral argument at the Supreme court and understand why it was, for example, that I told somebody who's, Oh, whose parent lives in town, who had called me out of concern because they couldn't reach their parent, why they should not call the police to ask for a wellness check. Um, the parent is black, and we know how some of the wellness checks have gone quite badly um, in the past. And I'm, I, I, each and every one of these the Supreme Court case today and other situations provide insight into why there has to be two separate organizations of individuals controlled by somebody who is not a member of either and directed by somebody who is not a member of either to provide for community safety. And I just I would urge the committee to be extremely thorough in evaluating the the police incidents and which things belong in which category and which should be assigned to each group. I think that the vast majority of, of police calls really belong in the hands of people who are not armed, who don't arrest people, who don't carry tasers and billy clubs and so forth. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Moyston. Are, are there others in the queue? No, there are not. Okay. Thank you. Let me quickly go to uh, to, to our, our thank you, uh, Mr. O'Connor. Um, You're welcome. We will just just move to our our our, our membership to see if there are uh, any opening comments insights you want to share before we get into our 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 own uh, uh, planned agenda. So Wiley, I wanted to say something. Yes, I'm just fixing my screen here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go go right ahead. Thank you. There you go. Sorry. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the um, racial equity um, conversation that the um, Women's uh, uh, League of, well, League of Women Voters put on yesterday. 
Um, it was very well attended. I think probably they had a, close to 200 people on. I know I saw some of our folks on there, uh, Mr. Wiley, Mr. Vernon Jones, and some other folks. I wasn't able to see everybody because it was quite extensive number of people on there. Um, so I'm sure others might have been on. Um, you know, very good conversation. I want to give a shout out to um, you know Monica Cage and and my son Phoenix Ferrer Ford for uh, representing the young people on there. They they were I have to say the best out of everybody. You know, mm -hmm. obviously I have a bias towards young people in that way, but um, they were they were wonderful uh, in terms of their points and very clear and you know brought up some very strong um, parts, especially in terms of us just especially adults and, and everybody else just standing up, you know, standing up to hate and standing up to, to doing what they need to do, not to just count on people of color to point out the things that need to be done, right? We all need to do it. Um, I also appreciated um, these, Disha Baz's point because it was, it was you know, it's, and it, I think as a person of color, sometimes it does get frustrating to me when I hear, um, you know, white people say, so what can I do? You know, I mean, that's a very frustrating um, question to ask, um, especially during these times when, you know, people of color are being killed left and right um, by, you know, either the, you know, different police departments or just, you know, uh, people out there, you know, uh, white people that are, you know, take up arms and, and kill people and target people because of their color. Um, but I, I appreciate Disha Baz's um, response when she said, you know, if you are in your circles, right, and you look around, and in your circles that you 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 live every day, you look around and you just see white faces. There's the problem. That's it. Here, point blank, right? You need to start diversifying and and making sure that all the circles, right, and boards. Obviously, that extends to boards. That extends to organizations. Extends to employment places where you work. It extends to where you go recreationally. It extends to everything, every part of life, right? Um, to to then make sure that you are diversifying. And the other part too, you know, like that I, that I thought about because obviously folks that were on, it's not like we could come, you know, and talk. Me, I'm talking about things that made me think about, about the work that we're doing. The other part is about education, right? The part that we always feel as, as, as people of color, BIPOC people that we always have to educate or, you know, and educate um, white folks in terms of what's going on. Um, it's also that part of like, you know, white allies that are out there, you need to make sure to educate other white people. You know what I'm saying? You need to step up and educate other white people and really let them know what, you know, the, the, you know in terms of what, what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it is very easy to kind of just sit back and, um, and say, hey, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on or what to do and so on and so forth. Um, and then obviously for me, you know, my part in it was just listening to see how it can inform the work that we're doing, right, on CSWG, um, because obviously it's, it's very relevant. Um, and, you know, again, I know there was some comments that stated when folks were saying, what can I do? It's just like, hey, listen in to what is happening here, you know, give your feedback, make sure you're sharing you know, um, ideas and, and different ways to improve, you know, our town. Um, also, you know, one of the comments that uh, Milka Shabazz also made, which I, I even put in, and I'm sure we're gonna be talking about later, just the fact that, you know, the town of Amherst is called Amherst. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if we, if we don't change the town of Amherst, then I don't even know what we're doing in terms of inclusivity. You know, when you're talking about inclusivity and our town is named after Jeffrey Amherst, and, and who committed suicide against Native Americans, then, you know. So Amilka Shabazz brought that up and that was a very good point. Um, so, so I know there was a, a lot of uh, comments on there in terms of like making sure people get involved, get involved in terms of the work that we're doing. And also I made a point and it was shared about making sure that our recommendations, when our recommendations do come out, that they're actually going to be implemented and put into place. And it's not just gonna be another thing to say that, hey, we did this, right? Spent all these months doing this and then nothing comes out of it. So those are my points.
Thank you, Ms. Greer. Others of the committee? I do want to welcome, um, by the way, um, Ms. Bowen, Mr. Cage. I don't think I acknowledged it in the beginning. They're here at the meeting. Thank you all for being here and being a part of this <clears throat> as well. Um, okay, just moving forward, um, we were scheduled to have a conversation with um, uh, Dr. D. Shabazz, the seventh generation. I don't know, Ms. Uh, Ms. Moisten, if if she's in the in the audience or not, I was informed she was going to be here. I'm yes, promoting no. them all to panelists now. Yeah, we're okay, all good. here. <laughs> I was waiting to see some. Oh, there they are. Oh. Yeah, we're we're all here. So thank you. Yes. When you want us to begin now. I, I want us to welcome you first okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you for being here. And um, th this, is, this is our first opportunity to, to get some feedback from you, certainly on what's been going on. You know, we know we started uh, pretty abruptly in, uh, uh, last week. And um, so we're, we're in the queue now. So thank you for being here, uh, all of you, to uh, give us an update on where, where you are. And as, as I mentioned, I don't know if you, you heard earlier, there is a, a, a need for us to uh, really monitor and, and track our timeline for what's, uh, what needs to happen uh, within, within the work and to make sure we, we do what needs to be done. So at, at some point, I don't know, I, I know uh, Dr. Chabaz's time is sometimes limited in terms of, you know, your opportunity and the group's opportunity to be here. But uh, if there's some part of that that we can have while you're here, that would be great. I appreciate it. So let me, sure. let me, let me stop and welcome you all again. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'll let you roll ahead. All right. Well, thank you all. And uh, once again, thank you for the, the hard work that you all are doing because I know firsthand what it is to put in uh, time and energy and intellect and creativity in serving um, others and serving your community. So thank you for doing so. Um, I agree, Deborah, the, the young people, they, they shall lead us, you know, I'm ready to follow them at any point. So, <laughs> um, so to get down to business, we have been busy. Um, I, I want to speak about the timeline and that next week we can have, uh, we can flesh out more of the timeline. Um, but we have been busy uh, on the part A side in particular in doing the participatory action research and the community engagement. I'll, I'll let Katie speak to that because she's over that part. And then Terry, uh, Terry Mullen will then speak to part B and particularly what we're doing and looking at um, many of the programs that are out there uh, regarding alternatives to policing. So um, I'm going to really let them have at it. I just want to say on my okay. end and, and trying to keep things oh. together and keep my foot on, on both part A and, and B or my, my foot in there. Um, I have been working on recruiting. Uh, we got a flyer out in particular to help recruit focus group members. We have our ambassadors, I'm happy to say. Um, and I've been out in the community talking to folk, uh, sometimes in person uh, with masks, talking to folks, uh, generating some, some interest and excitement. And folks so much want to be a part of uh, sharing their story. I have uh, really experienced that with people firsthand. They want to share their story, uh, good and bad. Um, they also, they want something for their youth so that there's not a problem or an issue where the, the youth have nowhere to go and then they're stopped by police for whatever reason or targeted by police. They want something in their communities that um, they know that their youth can be there, that it's particularly culturally um, 
uh, it has some cultural component as well as an educational component. So I was glad to hear that. And I'm always happy to, to help. You know, I've offered, you know, I'm part of Amherst Media. So I've, I've offered to bring folks there to um, get them started as producers. You know, we always need content. So I love getting content from the youth. So lots of stuff going on uh, without further ado, because we actually have a workshop to attend with our community ambassadors at 630. So Katie, take it away. Thank you, G. Hello, team. It's great to see everybody. Um, we have done a lot <laughs> since we last saw you. We have disseminated a, or made a, people aware of an application for the community ambassador position. We've since recruited six community ambassadors who are um, two who identify as um, male and four who identify as female. Collectively, they speak four additional languages in addition to English. Um, I think that's all the identifying information I'll give you at this point. I um, have had the honor to work with Dr. Johnson Anderson to create a curriculum that we are using with them in terms of developing um, four different workshops to move them through the participatory action research um, what do I want to say approach um, to a Tonight, we will have our second workshop with them. We started with our eager group on Sunday and we are reconvening this evening. Um, eager bunch, very insightful, very enthusiastic and eager to help with this initiative. Um, <clears throat> tonight, we'll have our second and then by the end of tonight's workshop, they will be ready to head off into the community um, and start to gather um, the data, so to speak. Um, in about a week's time, or a, a little bit before then, we will start to work them through, um, you know, some data analysis workshops so that they are ready to work with the data by April 5th or so. So we are in the timeline, the proposed timeline of collecting and doing the community outreach by April 6th. It is fast and furious, but we are, um, you know, eager to, to collect the stories which have already been started and um, they are actively, the community ambassadors are actively recruiting their community members um, to, with, with whom they'll meet and collect stories. I am happy to answer any questions, but as Dr. Shabazz said, we, we do have a 6.30, so I want to be able to maybe eat something prior to that. Any questions about the community outreach piece? Thank, thank, thank you both. I, I don't, uh, do you have other information coming from uh, you, uh, Terry? Yes, Terry. Just, yes. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to leave him out. I, 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 he, he's here, so. Yes, yeah. most definitely in the clouds. Yeah. They're there. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I see they're there in the clouds. That's, that's, uh, that's really good. <laughs> I'm going to jump off if that's all right. Before, though, I just want to thank Ms. Moiston for all your help with getting the um, form for community ambassadors on, on your web on the web page, so thank you. Both forms, because they've been translated, so. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Katie, I think I, there might uh, be a question. Katie, we have mm -hmm. a, oh, just a quick thing. No, go. just to say that, um, uh, for Katie, thank you for that information. That's all great news. Really excited to hear that. Thank you, it's exciting to be doing it. And Katie, are these, um, are these ambassadors uh, members of our BIPOC community? Indeed. Okay. I all of them. I mm -hmm. I heard that or not, I thought it was, the case but just wanted to be sure exactly thank you dr k thank you all thank you have a good rest of your evening okay good luck in your uh, workshop thank you so um, yes thank i you. uh got a bunch of data that you all have been working on and um i've gotten uh, all email correspondence and all resources and I haven't read everything quite quite yet, but I've sorted it and, and um, uh, have a good sense of 
uh, where y'all of that are at and it's very impressive and um, so what I spent time doing this week was to try to narrow down some municipalities based on what I heard through Jennifer Moyson um, and your group, um, some interest in um, a few, and then I included a few uh, that I've been researching and looking into. Um, I may have missed one or two, but I can definitely submit that uh, later this week if that's needed. Um, I have a short presentation if you'd like to go through that just on the municipalities that I looked into and kind of where they're at and how they stack up against Amherst. Um, so if I'm allowed to share my screen, I can do that at this point. Yep, go ahead. I saw a nod, so. Yes, yes and, no, and you we, should be able to. We would appreciate it too. Thank you. All right, so um, I can be a pretty fast speaker. So if at any point, just say, hey, I have a question. So um, the first one I want to show was Newton. Um, you all had been following their, um, their consulting group and their town halls. Um, so it seems really important uh, to get them on the board. Um, so you can see they're, they're a bit bigger than we are. Um, I'm just gonna make this smaller so I can see my whole screen. Um, but the racial statistics are comparable for sure. I'm a statistician, so I'm not gonna say they're similar or anything uh, too uh, defining. But um, yeah, so the biggest thing is their population is about double R's and then um, their budget's a lot bigger and their police department is a lot bigger. Um, so the interesting thing about um, Newton is they also hired a consulting group, Strategy Matters. Um, they published their recommendations already. Um, they took it, uh, they seem to be heading down um, uh, into reforms, things like more training, more de-escalation de training, things along those lines. Um, the one rather interesting thing about Newton is that it has one of the lowest crime rates in the country, yet in the past 18 months, two people have been killed by police. Um, so that's, I think, we can all draw our own conclusions from that and how that might be viewed and why that might happen and things along those lines. Um, and then the other kind of parallel that I wanted to draw is that Newton also had a strong defund chapter presence in their town hall meetings. Um, and that was of interest. So I'll take a pause. Do you want folks to ask question here, Terry, or wait till the end? Um, probably as we go, I think that would be okay. easiest for me. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell me, I have a question for you. Yes. So, uh, Ms. So Ferreira, you it, can I hang on a minute? Ms. Ferreira, oh. just, I was going to recognize hands. Ms. Ferreira, oh, sorry. Her, then Ms. Pat. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that this is uh, good information, uh, Terry. I really appreciate you, um, you know, kind of breaking it down that this way. Newton was one of the municipalities that I've been following um, since we began doing this work. Um, even though, like you said, uh, you know, even though it has a larger um, population and the, the, fun, the budget is bigger, but statistically, um, I mean, like you said, you know, comparable, obviously you can't say apples to apples, oranges to oranges, but comparable, especially around the ethnic, um, com, uh, you know, the comp uh, composition ethnically. Uh, and Newton is an area that I do know of because that's where I went to law school. Uh, the law school, um, Boston College Law School is in Newton. So I'm, I'm familiar with the area um, and, and it's very much kind of like, you know, it's very um, academically focused, very affluent uh, in, in certain respects, but also other, you know, in terms of, of people of color, not as much, you know, it's a lot kind of like here in Amherst. So that's why I think Newton, even though it's 
it's the population is bigger, the budget's bigger, but I still think we could utilize a lot of what Newton is doing to kind of look at our work. Um, and just to say that I remember when I was in law school, I remember, you know, my um, then boyfriend, but then became my husband, you know, black male, he had gotten accosted by the police once, you know, on, on, you know, in Newton basically saying, what, what are you doing here? Why are you here? <laughs> type of thing. You know, he was like, I'm a law student, but they thought he was a criminal. So, um, you know, Julius, Julius Ford, which a lot of you obviously knew, my late husband. Um, but anyway, so just wanted to share that because I think this is a good one to follow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I grew up in Needham myself, so yeah. around that area as well. Yeah. I want to go back, if I may, to Miss Pat. She had her hand up after Miss Ferreira. So Terry, thanks for doing this. Um, my question is for the AMES population. I'm assuming um, <clears throat> does, this include, does this include student population as well? So this is from the census. Um, so I believe it's only uh, if they hold residency um, okay. in Amherst. So largely it would be no, um, unless they've transferred their residency is my understanding. Thank you. I wanted to know what we're comparing to. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I did include um, Ithaca, New York, which also is a fairly large uh, college town that's, that's working on this uh, as a, Bit. Some of their statistics are, are quite similar, uh, so I'll get to that at the end since it wasn't one of the ones y'all had identified, um, but I did wind up including it. Um, yeah. So Cambridge uh, was another one. Um, again, population is a lot bigger. Um, here, there's a bit more uh, diversity. Again, this is just eyeballing um, the census breakdown. Um, and I pulled this, I should have put citations in this, but um, I pulled this directly from the census government site. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can see a little bit more diversity. As we know, Cambridge is a, almost in Boston and um, a lot more city trafficy esque, I would say, personally. Um, but yeah, um, for where their police budget is at, significantly higher budget. Um, the interesting thing about Cambridge is that they've actually had a police review board since um, the 80s with some investigative power, um, which is, I believe, why your group uh, identified it as of interest. Um, I think this is also um, very interesting. I, it is nice to have a Massachusetts town with this system. Um, it's really easy to compare <laughs> Massachusetts budgets, not so much to other states. Um, as you'll see, my my wording gets a little different as we go forth into other states because they don't report using quite the same phrases. Um, but yeah, uh, the review board uh, ranks kind of midline for power um, in terms of review boards. Um, there are other review boards that can actually um, fire the chief police with cause, uh, uh, the police chief with cause, um, but considering when it started and the amount of data that they had, that they have using a review board, I think it's it's a very interesting uh, case study, but I'm interested to hear what y'all have to say. Terry, thank you. One, one question I have related to this is that, you know, you referred to this as a, there's as a, a review, review board. And, um, you know, from, from my reading, there are a number of different titles that's called is given and to these different groups review boards oversight committees that you know wh whatever you want to call them but there's an array of different uh, uh levels of authority and responsibility and power uh, across the board so i'm wondering if as you're going forward looking looking at these if we were to go down a similar route in amherst what might be the type of review board, if you will, 
um, that might best suit us. And I think you would learn that from, you know, certainly from talking with people in, in the community and certainly from understanding, you know, our, our Amherst context, because uh, there, there are municipalities and towns who have different ways of over, overseeing, if you will, uh, the police department. And um, they have different uh, lines of authority and responsibility associated with that. So just, you know, at, at some point, maybe, you know, I was looking at the array of, of different possibilities might be useful to all of us. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we, Amherst, if Amherst does decide to recommend this, if you all decide to recommend this, there is an organization that governs the review boards, which I'm sure if you've looked into it, you've you've seen the, I think it's N-A-C-O-L-E. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I can't, I'm so bad at translating acronyms into, into their words, um, but basically they kind of document um, review boards, they've been hosting seminars all year long. Um, so there's plenty of YouTube content on classes on how to qualify review boards, how to, um, so like you said, there's a vast array, there's like uh, the auditor type, which looks for patterns, tries to anticipate problems, tries to get all the data, full subpoena power. Often these ones can um, fire, hire, um, Chief of Police's, uh, sorry, I keep doing that, Police Chiefs, um, chief. um, and so like some big examples of those are like Oakland, California, um, Albuquerque, which I know was on your list, I didn't have time to get it up here uh, to get, since they're, they're, um, their system is one of the more complicated ones and I didn't feel like I could do it justice in the short amount of time. Um, they they have their, their own, an own agency, things like that. Um, then there's other more reactor, reactionary police boards. Um, and this will all be kind of laid out in the report for you um, mm -hmm. the, in this comparison. So I think especially with police review uh, boards or commissions, or like you said, there's a plenty of names uh, throughout the municipalities in America um, for these units. Um, it will be important to kind of reference more than just one specific kind. And I'm aware of that and will be uh, kind of laying out the different kinds, not just mm -hmm. specifically with review boards, since there is more data than other uh, alternatives or other reforms, um, we'll want to kind of see the pitfalls that other uh, municipalities have um, faced with this and then also just like how to fit it into the structure. How does it fit with the charter? How does it work with our current a APD? How do, how do the laws, like what are the pitfalls? Do you make it a separate thing? So yeah, those, those are all questions that um, will need to be written out in the, in the review, in the report. All right, Mr. Vernon Jones, um, and then Ms. Walker. Uh, Terry, I just wanted to check so it sounds like you're planning to really give us some information about review boards of different types and some samples and what might best fit Amherst. Uh, does this is this dependent on which municipalities we pick, uh, or is this something we can uh, expect from you, regardless of which municipalities we ask for otherwise? Um, most of the municipalities are either considering a review board in their reforms and or already have one and want to up the power that it has. So I would mathematically of this presentation, there's not a subset where you wouldn't get stuff about review boards. Okay. I, I'm not, I think I mentioned Cambridge because it was a review board that had both investigatory and subpoena power and a track record. Uh, I'm not attached to Cambridge other than that, um, but I wanna make sure we get a picture of, you know, a relatively powerful board and what, what its operation has looked like, not just somebody's aspiration because they're thinking about doing one. Right. So Russ, um, I'm gonna ask Terry to share um, a conversation we had about the research. And um, Terry 
kind of, if we leave it at the, the level of the comparisons to make have to do with towns, we might miss something. You know, we, we do need a finite number, but the comparison could be made differently. Terry, you want to share that? Yeah, so as if, I was- if I, may, okay. if I may just interrupt here, I don't want to just go back, circle back, because I, I did sorry. recognize Ms. Walker. I think she had her- Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it, but it had to do with what Russ was saying, but we can come back to it. Yeah, so just, just hang, hang that thought right there. Yeah, go yes. ahead. So it's okay to move forward because my comment kind of is a little bit of a different track. So it's okay to finish this complete thought and come back to me. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, Thank sorry, you. Terry, go right ahead. Sorry, uh, yeah, so one thing I was considering as I was doing this preparation for this meeting was that uh, maybe I was misguided in the in choosing municipalities as the comparison metric, that maybe it would be better service to Amherst if we looked at sort of uh, the vehicle of alternate or reform. So from my understanding, y'all have um, researched reforms of police and also separately alternate services. So the reform being review boards, possibly more trainings, things like that. Alternate service being things like Cahoots, uh, Dasher, um, which is under STARS um, and those types of models. And then even further, there was interest in more individualized services such as peer, peer specialists, um, models and how could a government support a peer specialist model and things like that. So I was I was having some curiosity around if it would be better to shift to say like a report on comparing review boards, the pitfalls, comparing responder models like Cahoots, the pitfalls, and comparing peer specialist models, um, if that would be of more interest. Hmm. Because what you're what you're talking about from um, and I'm I'm trying to remember our conversation is that you're limited then by the scope of what that municipality right has envisioned and what they have done, and if you're actually interested in the services and finding out how effective those services are within those towns and municipalities, then you look at the programs and the services. And of course you identify the, the, the location where it's being used and how it's being used and how it's affecting the population in some way. So um, it's just something to think about. We could definitely do it by town, but then um, you have a limitation of towns, whereas uh, the literature we're, we're going through anyway and the things we're researching anyway has to do with the effectiveness of these particular programs and services. So that may be more, you know, that may be much more helpful and reveal a lot more information going that route. Thank you. I, I want to recognize Ms. Ferreira and then I think Mr. Vernon Jones had his hand up after. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, talk about what we're, we're doing here because I know um, Ms. Walker wanted to talk about something different. Um, so I'm not jumping over you, Ms. Walker. <laughs> um, but oh, just God. to say that, um, but just to say that, yeah, I think I would be more interested in kind of like the services, so alternative services, um, you know, like uh, alternative uh, kind of programs that are successful out there, you know, the, the pros and the cons and what ha has been successful. Um, I think for me, anyway, I can only speak for myself. I know when, when we first started on the municipalities, it was more so to kind of see, okay, what, what's around, right? What's around, especially in, around Massachusetts um, that could be similar, but I would be more interested in that, especially around, you know, not only just the, like the community response, like the cahoots and star, but also kind of like de-escalation experts, uh, conflict uh, folks that deal with conflicts, um, mediators, those, those that are like civilian, like a civilian group that deals with like kind of nonviolent um, uh, type of responses, uh, things like that. Um, you know, I think those would be interesting as we're looking at alternative services. Mm -hmm. Let me just, let me circle back here because I, I, I want to be sure I didn't, did I, oh, did I skip over you, Ms. Walker? Because I thought you were on a, a different track. That's why I went to Mr. Vernon Jones, but is this a good time for you to speak? It's okay, yeah, because it actually 
turned into exactly what I was gonna talk about. So um, at first I wanted to thank you, Terry, for putting this together in such a short time. This is great. Um, my question was uh, more about like process than content and that I'm wondering like how the places were gonna be compared. So basically what we were just discussing, because I was thinking if we wanna know the effectiveness of services that are being implemented, like how can we get that from this data? And I'm not really a data analyst, so I, I don't know, but what I'm thinking about right now is that like some of the recommendations that we've already been anticipating, like um, youth centers or multicultural centers, like does Cambridge already have these things? And if so, since these things have been implemented, does that actually lessen the, the interactions of the police with the youth in the community? Has it actually been, been improving? Do people utilize these services? And I, I think those things are gonna be quite different for places that are closer to the city because someone from Cambridge can utilize um, a, a youth center that's just in a town right over, whereas Amherst is not like that. But I think that um, it would be helpful to measure it, I guess, then in terms of alternative services, because um, I'd, I'd wanna see how our recommendations are gonna tie into community safety. And before, Terry, before you answer that, I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Bernardo, is this a, a, something you could piggyback on top of Ms. Walker's comment that uh, Mr. Uh, th that, uh, that Terry can, can respond to? Uh, because I'm also trying to manage the time. I, I know that, um, you know, uh, uh, and he has a workshop coming up in about 10 minutes. So uh, why don't you go ahead, Mr. Vernon, Vernon John. Well, I'd just say I would very happily have us agree to focus on programs and services rather than specifically on municipalities. Uh, and I want to echo the comment that I hope it, it's more than just, you know, all sort alternative community responders and um, civilian review boards the kind of programs that Alicia was just mentioning, uh, but also police policies around uh, use of force and, and other places where policy makes a difference. Um, but yes, I, I would happily have us agree to do programs and services rather than strictly municipalities. Ms. Walker, are you, yes. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to add one other thing because I actually um, did look up the Cambridge uh, Review Board and I did notice that like it, the seats aren't filled. There are like three people and all of the seats are vacant. And so I also would be interested in that information, like the actual use of the things that are being implemented and if, if they're being utilized at all, because I don't really know what that means. Okay, so Terry, I'm going to... Uh ask if you can respond collectively to, to those questions and comments and um, perhaps uh, Dee maybe give you the last word. I know you have to do this workshop coming up so we're approaching that time. So Terry. Yeah, please. so I think from what I'm hearing is that we're, we're kind of uh, in synchronicity here. Um, that uh, going by services, I think would give you a more broader picture. I think the, um, so we won't be able to do probably every service that was just listed in the past five minutes. Um, so, uh, but, so from my, from my knowledge so far, um, the places where there is government oversight, government charters, e, uh, ordinances that are governing these things so far are the um, review board that's very clear, that's very understandable from like the government, like you're suggesting something to the town type thing. Um, now, I don't wanna in any way limit it to that because um, so, but like for ease of understanding, um, that's my sense. Um, and then on top of that, the responder models have been kind of built into the budget and the funding. Um, now there is some more funding debates um, and things like that, like 
So like Newton, for example, has a very large budget item of schools. Like they fund their schools like no one else. Um, and um, for example, uh, and then Somerville, they just moved uh, $750,000 to racial justice equity. So, so they haven't quite fully fleshed out exactly what that means super publicly yet. I'm sure with conversation, we could look into that. Um, but I am also really interested in more of like the outside um, organizations, organizations that aren't directly funded by their town government, aren't under an ordinance. Like what are they doing? Are those models something that the Amherst government, Amherst town could look into, things like that. So, how, and how would that work with our current charter? Like would things need to be changed, et cetera, or would, would it fit right in? Um, in so terms are you of, talking about Oakland as the example? Do you yeah, have that so data? Oakland, I, I wasn't able to put it in just okay. because of, uh, just but yeah, so Oakland was one of the towns, was one of the cities that I looked into. They have a very strong overview uh, review board, but they also have a, an amazing community there. Like their community is extraordinarily active. They have abolition groups. They have um, a youth uprising that is a giant coalition actually with their police department and things like that. So they're kind of, whenever I read about um, policing, Oakland almost always comes up either sometimes in a negative connotation that really scary and horrible things do happen there, but also in a really amazing kind of like community activism connotation that the grassroots organizations there are extraordinarily powerful and getting a lot done outside of the structure of the government. So I also think part of this report should include that and ideas of how the government could support that without getting in the in the way of that also. So those are my thoughts, but I see hand, so I'm gonna stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who can went up there first and so Miss Bowman has her yeah. hand up and then but Miss Anabak, Miss Pat there had something to say a while ago as well. I don't know if she still wants to speak. Go ahead, Miss Pat. It's okay. Miss Bowman. Hi. Um so the one thing that I that kind of um when hearing about the um, Oakland report kind of like immediately shot to my head is that is the history of Oakland and the history of trauma towards people of color by the police force in Oakland. And I feel like you can't really present the data of what they're doing now without, without also presenting the data of the trauma that they came from. Like Amherst has not come from that kind of trauma. If that, I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm not saying that they're not doing good stuff. And I think it's very important that we could look to them as like a goal, but at the same time, we got to recognize that, we got to recognize that their history is very different from the history of Amherst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, so Tashina, you bring up a really good point, um, but it's it's again going, uh, trying to depart from the model of looking at the town and the municipality, mm -hmm. and look at the services and the programs. So it's not like those services and programs didn't emerge from that trauma and, and therefore people got activated and, and tried to create alternative services, particularly outside of the, the mainstream government. But if we are doing some work and, and looking at what has been effective in other communities, then it could be whether it's Oakland or whether it's another community, then we're simply looking at the service and the program and we're, we're not trying to look at, you know, comparing 
because that that would be comparing apples and oranges, Oakland in right. terms I, of its size I, and the history. So right. that's all I I'm saying that. is that you're looking at the service and the program and not the city and not the town. Right. I understand. I still I, I get that. Like I totally get that. But even still looking at the services, like like I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be honest, like with with my feelings about this situation. Part of my issue, which is a really, really big issue with Amherst, is that because there are so many people that are transient, transient and they're coming in and out, and then on top of it, you know, um, there's a lot of students here that affect what's happening in the community, that something happened and we get momentum and it happens and it's going really good for a while, but then the people who are like kind of in charge of doing it or taking care of it, it just doesn't get passed down. So my concern is that whatever we implement, whatever it comes out to be, that somehow there needs to be something implemented as part of it to be like, look, this gets passed. This is stuff that is getting passed down. This does not change. Like, I don't know, like, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I, I, I don't know if I'm really explaining it well, but I just feel like I'm really concerned that we're going to implement a program and then we're all going to be gone in one path or another and it's going to be like, why do we, we don't need this balance. Like, so you're going, you're going in and out. Yeah, we can't. Tashina, I can't really hear you, but what I did hear was really important in the sense that you're talking about how do we implement whatever the service, whatever the program's going to be, how do we implement that into the town structure to make sure it's sustainable? So our job is, of course, to make recommendations. The town's job and the people's job within the community is to then make those recommendations, it sounds like, from the CSWG to the town manager, to the town council, and then whatever recommendations are made and budgeted for that the town's feet is held to the fire. So our job is to make the recommendation. So what I'm proposing, and it doesn't have to be the only path, but that we might get more out of the research that we have been uh, hired to do is to look at the services and the programs instead of just the town itself. Right. So, and, like, what what is available that's not being utilized? Okay. Yeah. And and what can I just do? You mind? Yeah. If, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So, and one of my biggest questions with this work is how will it fit into Amherst? Like. Oakland and that sort of um, style, I mean, Oakland's kind of like the biggest one, but is kind of, so in the in the bid, there was a line on, on defunding and abolition. And if we could bring in some research on that and how, like what happens and why it happens and how could we envision it here, et cetera, or if that's even a route to take um here um so but with that so sorry i lost my train of thought but but basically what i'm trying to say is like one of my biggest questions and in my outline that i sent to um the the subcommittee when we were talking about the bid is not only do we have to evaluate the effectiveness but we have to evaluate how it will fit in like what structures will it run into and if it's running into structures, is it worth trying to change them or is it worth doing something smaller and with an eye on change? So that's kind of always going to be a big part of where uh, my work is as well um, in this. And so I really, but I really do appreciate you bringing that up because I, I agree that that's a, a bigger hurdle that Amherst has to, has to face. Ms. Walker. Um, I just wanted to say that I don't think that we should recommend anything small. Like, I think that everything that we do should, should be big. Like we should be trying to do the biggest things that we can do for our community right now. And I hear, um, Tashina's frustration. And I think that 
well, for me, what my idea of how this is work is that that Terry will bring us this information so that we can have ideas, not that we're gonna take this exact model and just move it into Amherst, but that we will put our heads together and reimagine what that can look like for Amherst. And we can create our own system with the information that we're getting from these other places, because I don't think anything that's been implemented anywhere is just gonna work here. Sorry, my kids. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> um, Ms. Pat, anyone? I, I'm looking. Oh, Ms. Okay, Ferreira. I can say something. Yeah, um, go right ahead because I skipped over you before. I think I didn't see you. Then Ms. Ferreira, and then we'll move forward. Actually, you didn't. I didn't uh, raise my hand before. Oh, I, I just want to thank um, Terry and the other two, um, Seven Generation, for their presentation. I think also for our group to be thinking about whatever recommendation that is brought before us. So think about pilot program so that we see how we, you know, like maybe for a year and evaluate it and see if it will work. Because we can't just say we can come up with something that will work right away. I've been in MS for more than 30 something years. And yesterday there was a vision meeting that was done and I was looking at some of the participants, great um, uh, meeting that some of the players are the people who don't support BIPOC community, who don't support some of our um, people of color who run for offices. And I saw them yesterday. So I think my, the point I'm trying to make is that we will come up with something that let's keep open mind. It might be a one year pilot and then we come back and reevaluate. Is this working for Amherst or not? So, so that we don't, dis, um, get disappointed if it didn't work out. We just have to keep open mind. So, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of like um, reiterate what Ms. Walker was saying, I mean, for me, I think what would be important is just to kind of bring us this information, like what, you know, what you're saying, Terry, in terms of like just different services and different programs that are out there. And for me, like cutting edge, right? I wanna see what's out there, what's out, out of the box, not just the, the cookie cutter, same old, same old, I want out of the box, cutting edge programs that are out there. And then, yeah, and then we'd have to see, okay, how could it this fit Amherst? But I wanna see the ideas. I wanna see what's out there that's exciting, that's successful, that's efficient, the efficacy of it too, but cutting edge and out of the box. Yeah. Um, so it seems like since Dee and I have to go, the next step that's coming out is uh, I should come back with a list of services. Um, probably I should send that to you by Friday. Um, so y'all can look at them this weekend and maybe um, just kind of like a broad overview, not a ton of detail yet um, that seem, because uh, the other thing, so a list of services, um, uh, what I'm hearing is more out of the box and more um, innovative than just kind of what you can find in a Google search for police reform. Um, and yeah, I think, does that sound like a good next step to y'all in part B? You are muted, Mr. Wiley. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that that's a good beginning. Uh, we also, you know, when when you all are are leaving us, we're we're going to be having continuing discussions about our own internal thoughts on recommendations. So, what uh, I will say this while you're here, certainly, but our our committee may come up with some other thoughts that we'd like to throw your way, uh, you know, prior to Friday, let's say, so you can put that in the hopper as you're thinking about the, the work and, and formulating your, your, your next um, update to us. Um, I, I think initially this has been very helpful and I, you had a chance to hear some of our sentiment and we're hoping to have these weekly exchanges so that we can stay in tune with each other and um, you know stay on point as far as our work is done. So I, I know uh, D you have to go um, and Terry you have to go. I want to thank you all 
uh, very much for being here and making the time. Have a great workshop. Would you like me Thank to you. forward this to uh, y'all, the slides? Yeah, you can send it to Ms. Moist. Please. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank D. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, everyone. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Bye. Great. Thank you. Okay, that was, that was good. <laughs> it was good, very helpful. Um, I did, uh, I spoke with um, uh, uh, Dee Shabazz uh, last week and mentioned that we do have this space we've carved out in our, our meetings, uh, meeting format each week for them. So it's an expectation that they're gonna come weekly with stuff so we can inform their work uh, on a weekly basis, as long as we get information to them, we can ask questions. Um, they certainly can come back and forth. I, I'm, I'm serving as point person along with um, uh, Ms. Owen. So, um, you know, we can get that exchange going right away, you know, after this meeting, Thursday, Friday, and have some things in ready to go for Monday for our agenda. Um, so, appreciate all the questions you're asking too and the comments and sentiment around this because all of it has great meaning for us i think um then the next item on our agenda was the um the cress uh feedback we did a, a couple weeks ago we um uh was it a couple weeks ago last week we we um we started this work and then we you know we did a straw poll I know we, we gave Mr. Vernon Jones some feedback. We, we collected some numbers. And then there was a request that we, uh, you know, go and for those who didn't have a chance to respond, respond in particular with a concentrated effort to, to pull, uh, pull in your, your narrative comments. So I wanna just, you know, keep this, com this uh, alive. Um, we, we, we have a lot of information in there what what I, I did in this case was take all the narrative comments and just put them in a in a in an essay, if you will, by question so that people can see what each other is thinking about. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how we want to proceed with this. We, you know we took this as a straw poll. We're still trying to uh, to sort of, vet what it is that's important and how we're gonna narrow this down. So I wanna open the, the discussion up at this point and then lead to what might be our next steps around this as a, a community safety working group. So Ms. Walker and then Ms. Owen. Um, I just wanted to say, I didn't contribute to this document. I had a very busy week, but um, I did review the chart. So I do have like ideas in my head to contribute now. Uh, but I just wanted to suggest that we just go through it one by one and have a full discussion on each point so that we can just see where we are. And um, yeah, that's just my suggestion. Okay, that, that's fine. We, we have to have the conversation. So um, I know, and Ms. Ms. Owen, did you uh, get your hand up? Yeah, so my, um, my comment was actually to the first part of the chart um, in regards to staffing. Prior to this meeting, I did do a little bit of research on um, sort of a similar program to what we're trying to develop in Olympia, Washington. And what I found through just like mild research was that they have a population about 10,000 people more than us, but they have um, a very similar program in place and it has um, six full-time staff members and an additional um, peer resource for de-escalating conflicts. So I know that in the original chart, it said two, two or four, I could be wrong, for two full-time positions for this program. But I think with our recommendations, we should make sure we're thorough. And I just don't wanna implement a pilot program that's not well-funded, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. Uh, Ms. Moyston. Ms. Moyston. I'm, I'm so I'm trying to take minutes at the same time. Can you just repeat the town that you, Brianna, that you were speaking of? Yeah, of course. Um, Olympia, Washington. Okay. 
so if if this is if this is the the, the track we want to want to take um, to to go over these questions um, one by one, um, I'd be happy to do that. Um, hopefully, we can we can get through it. We we may have more discussion then, uh, or we may need more time <laughs> depending on how we discuss this. Certainly, but um, and there are some people who haven't had a chance to contribute just yet. So. Perhaps we can we can dive in and try to be as efficient as possible. I, I guess you know one thing I'd like to say is that you know for those of us who have made comments and those who have been thinking about it certainly, um, I, I I I see us pulling all this information in and all of it being useful. Um, it, it this is we're we're not trying to you know eliminate commentary, but I'm trying to think we're trying to see how we can pull this together so that in some way we can uh, collate these comments in a way that has meaning for all of us. I, in the stuff that I saw, I mean, there, there are some pieces that, that overlap. There's some very similar kinds of thinking uh, and thoughts. So hopefully we can, we can merge these things in a way that um, have it come out on the other end where we're, uh, we have some general consensus certainly about what we're trying to do with respect to um, uh, community responders, et cetera. So, um, why don't we dive in and j just see how, how far we get. Um, and Russ, I don't have the, um, the first that, that collated the, the, the numbers that, that you took uh, last time. I don't have that printout in front of me or I don't have it on my screen. So I was wondering if you might have it available. Well, um, you know, I think Ms. Walker suggested we have sort of have a fresh discussion on each number. I, I'm not sure. I can find the numbers here somewhere. Yeah. I think it's more important that we get everybody's thinking. Okay, let's go for it then. So the, the first um, the, the first question was um, the proposal of the transfer of, of two police. Well, these are these are all combined by the transfer uh, the two police positions currently on permanent uh, on hold permanently in the Crest program. Uh, transfer two additional positions um, uh, from the APD to Crest. Um, do you have this chart, by the way, um, Ms. Moyston? Because my reading is not gonna be efficient at all, I don't think. N not, not, this, not these comments necessarily, but the, the uh -huh. actual grid itself. No, I can probably get it in a few moments if you want to start your discussion. Yeah, because I think that's going to be, if we're going to have a discussion about it, people looking at it might be a little little better than me reading. Oh, but I will need to stop sharing my screen for a moment. Okay. What? Yes, um, Ms. Ferreira. No, I was just gonna say in the meantime, could we just start discussing so that we, cause I know time is of the essence. Yeah, sure. I just, I didn't know it was gonna take how, how long. <laughs> hey, Mr. Vernon Jones, go ahead. Well, I noticed that, I mean, what the chart says is transfer to police positions currently on hold permanently to the Crest program. And I thought oh, Brianna made a good point that maybe what we really want is the full salary of those uh, positions. Uh, not just the the authorization to hire two people, but that that amount of money. And then the the proposal in the chart was then to get up to four during the 2021-2022 year. Um, and you know, Ms. Ferreras talked about wanting this as a 24/7 program. Brianna mentioned Olympia as, as six full-time employees. Brianna, do you happen to know whether they started with six or whether they worked up to it gradually? Yeah, so what from what I read, they did start with six, but um, in addition to their crisis response unit, they also had um, a team of peer, uh, not peer mentors, but um, peer specialists to help with mm -hmm. conflict resolution in the community. And both of these programs were well-funded. So in the beginning, um, there was town funding, a separate grant, and there was also significant funding for the peer specialists. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, like uh, Mr. Vernon Jones already alluded, and I had it in my in the comments beforehand. Yeah, for me, I mean, I don't think, you know, how can we just say, okay, well, two positions, it has to be, obviously, it has to be the full salary of their positions, right? The full salary of their positions. But I can't say, okay, two positions now and then two positions later um, to implement a program when we don't, you know, we, we have to really make an assessment or they have to make an assessment. All I'm trying to do is make a recommendation, you know? Mm -hmm. will it take to to fully fund the, this crest uh, uh um program alternative so that's fully funded fully resourced to be what you're going to do is going to you're going to set it up to fail right and then two what you're going to do is you're going to have police still responding which was something that's later on in the grid police still responding to Just so you know, Ms. Ferrer, you're, you're, you're freezing up and we're, we're not able to hear okay. more what you're Sorry. saying. Okay, let me, let me say it again then. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, so what I was... How many, how many people are in place without doing an assessment? You know, my thing is to make a recommendation. We've seen that this Crest um, alternative is a good alternative for us to have in place. So how can I say whether it's going to be two or three or four or six, right? It's going to be dependent on that. But it needs to be fully resourced and it needs to be fully staffed because one, I don't want it to be just halfway staffed or halfway resourced because we're going to be setting it up to fail. And I don't want the police responding to these types of, of incidents again. I don't want them to be, you know, just because the crest of people are tied up, now the police are going to be responding to them. No, if it's not a good idea for them to respond to that, it in the first place, they shouldn't be responding it, to it because there's not enough staff to be handling the incident. So an assessment needs to be made. I don't know if it's two, three, or four. So, you know, so those are some of the things that we need to consider. And uh, Ms. Ms. Pat. So um, I, I believe I made a comment on this particular section and that is, um, if we're saying two or four um, press staff, what does that really mean? Are we talking about one shift? Are we talking about 24 seven? Um, are we going to create like three shifts per day? What does that mean? To me, um, <clears throat> Mr. Ross, thank you. You did a great job putting this together for us, but I just feel that um, the program will be, uh, ready to fail right away because I don't think the personnel that is being recommended here is sufficient. What if somebody calls out? What if somebody quits? What if that a lot of ifs that we should consider as we discuss um, this issue. So I just feel that we need way more personnel in order not to tie you know, few people up and have the police doing the job that the crest people are supposed to be doing. So it's just not enough staffing. In a, in a, similar, in a similar vein, uh, and one of the, the, the comments I made is, is that, um, uh, you know, first I was, just in terms of the first question, depending on what positions you're talking about, even in the first place, uh, two positions, what two positions are we talking about? What's the, the, the weight of the amount of money associated with those could be one thing. But the, the bigger thing for me was similar to what we're talking about now is that to say we're going to take this amount of money and apply it to Crest before we know what Crest looks like. I, I think we, we should be designing the, the ideal program and, uh, and putting, a, putting a price tag on it and seeing what it actually would look like uh, if we were to create it to, to be useful to Amherst and, um, and then come up with that particular number and then look at other funding sources, whether it's police, whether it's town money, uh, new town money, whatever it's going to be. But I, I, you know, having this as a reference certainly is, is a good start. Um, but uh, I, I don't want to miss an opportunity, as, as someone may have just said, I may be repeating it, just to, to create a program that's going to have some utility, some sustainability, using Tashina's uh, comment earlier, Ms. Bowman. Uh, to start there, to really make a strong statement right there. Ms. Walker? Um, I agree. And sorry, I lost my train of thought there. 
Um, I agree, but I, and I think that this is a good basis for like, we want something like this to happen. I also was uncomfortable with specifying two as the number of positions um, because I don't know exactly how it's supposed to work in conjunction with our consultants, but my idea was that we would get a more specific idea of what we need from our community. So when we hear back from what, from our community and what's happening our, in our community, I think that will give us a more clear idea of how fun, how staffed this program needs to be. Because I think the, well, that was my idea of how it would work, but I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira. Funding, and I think Mr. Wiley, you kind of um, made that um, comment already. Can you hear me? Now I can. It goes in and out. So we. All right. um, yeah. I think you're out now. Oh, um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sounding like the Verizon. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Exactly. Oh, no, I'm saying like, I think we, we, we need to, when we're looking at these recommendations is to really think about, and I think Ms. Pat has said that before, Mr. Wiley, you've said it too, is to really think about where we need to get this, this budget from, whether it be from the uh, police budget or whether it be from the town. I think we just really need to look at what's the best for our town and particularly BIPOC populations. And then, you know, think about the budget afterwards because I'm not, I'm, I'm okay with, with taking the, you know, the money from the police or wherever else it needs to be taken from in order to create what we need to create that's gonna be successful and it's gonna be sustainable. Okay, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. When I first developed this chart, I was frankly envisioning this more as a pilot program that would start small, sort of in the way Denver started theirs, you know, on a very limited basis and then expand it over time. I'm not attached to this at all. And I would gladly endorse, you know, starting with six or eight positions uh, right from the get go. Uh, so, you know, don't what, what's in the chart doesn't have to have any. <laughs> particular way if if the sentiment is that we want to really begin this program uh, so that it takes over this function you know it's almost completely mm -hmm. and I think not not knowing yet fully what what degree and to what level of, of functionality this this program would have if it were to be created in Amherst um, which is embedded in the whole whole conversation. Um, this I want I want to say too. You know, we're talking about taking money from, you know, <laughs> the police department or, or moving it or whatever we're doing. We're also talking about uh, in parallel a rethinking of the police department itself, not just the Crest program, but now we're talking about the police program because the police program will change. It'll change to something as the Crest program would come into play. So, because things will be very different. It won't be the same anymore. So what is it gonna look like on both sides? I think our responsibility is more right now on the, on the Crest side, certainly, to say, let, you know, let's, let's put this in there. If we see it as essential, important, um, if we can get that moving, then, you know, if it, if it means major overhaul in the police department, maybe it does. Um, maybe if the town decides, you know, we also want to put more money into this outside of just drawing off from the police department. Maybe there needs to be some other money coming in here. So that's, that's the point I make. Uh, Ms. Walker. Um, so I, I, I mean, I also support like moving money from the police department if need be, or from anywhere if need be, but I just have a question um, for clarity because I don't really know too much about exactly how the town budget process works for Mr. Bockelman. So if a town is like given X amount of money for a fiscal year and they make a budget with that money and at some point they decide they don't have enough money or they don't, or they need more funding for whatever reason, is there a way that a town can petition for more money or apply for more grants or find other sources of funding even after they're given a certain budget for the fiscal year? Mr. Bockelman. 
So, so that's a really good question. So um, when the town that we begin with the revenue that we know we are coming that's coming into the town, most of our revenue comes in through taxation from property taxes and other sources. So we sort of we know what that's going to be. And then from there, with that revenue base, we decide how we are going to expend the funds. And so we're in the process of building that budget. Now we start with a steady state. We look at what the schools need the regional school district and the elementary schools we look at the library and then we look at the town's needs um, during the course so that sort of expends all the income that's coming in we meet all of our obligations and then and you know pay the salaries of people pay our health insurance for everybody all that kind of stuff and then um, that gets presented to the town council and they vote that number within that's our budget for the year um, if we get more money to come in, if we get a grant or something like that we're able to expend that um, if there's a need for additional funding, the um, the town council could look at um, a, we could go to and seek additional funding, but typically they don't do that very often because that's basically taking it out of um, uh, free cash. It's a it's our savings account in essence. So it's a it's a we tend not to do that for any operations unless there's a real catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just Walker. Walking. If there is one, can you give me an example of a time that we have utilized asking for more money and what that would have been for? I don't think I've done it since I've been here. I don't know. It hasn't happened. It doesn't happen very often. I don't remember it ever happening here. Okay, thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Pat? So um, when I was looking at this actually last week, again, I was thinking in my head, three shifts, morning shift, like daytime shift, evening shift, overnight shift, three, three personnel, and one or two uh, supervisors. So I'm looking at 10 to 12 personnel for that um, section. I'm not attached to it, but to begin. Ms. Walker? Um, I think that sounds good, but also just wondering about dispatch, like how would they receive calls? Like, would we have to have other um, employees for dispatch? Would, dispatch? would they go to the 911? Like, would they call 911 or would they have a different number? And who would answer those calls? So um, I also have my hand up, my yes, little Ms. yellow hand. Yeah, <laughs> Ms. Ferreira. <laughs> so, um, well, I guess I wanted to, to respond to Mr. Brockelman. I mean, I think that, you know, this is gonna have to be something that, you know, might have to be one of those um, times where things are gonna be different and budget is gonna have to be looked at and, and, mm -hmm. and taken from, from somewhere else. Because obviously when the town council took this on, they couldn't think that whatever ideas were gonna come are gonna neatly fit into the budget that's already been thought of. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if we're really true about making some real changes here, if we come out with a program that is, a, you know, a program that you know, uh, address these issues that's been going on uh, in our community for, for, for ages, right? Uh, um, then it's gonna take some money, you know? You're, you're Go faded away, Ms. Ms. Ferreira there for a second. Yeah, but- It you takes some money, that's what I heard last. Well, what, can you hear me? Yes. No, I can't. It's going to have to go beyond uh, what we had, what the town had traditionally looked at before. We have to really kind of think, you know, like I said, if we're trying to think outside the box for for programs, you need to think outside the box for budget, you know, because then what are we doing here? You know, is, is this a waste of time on my part? You know, because I, I don't want to just be here, you know, thinking of things that are going to fit into the town's budget right now. We need to, to, to think something else. And I guess I want to hear from Mr. Bachman whether, you know, that that is the case. Because if not, you know, I'm, I'm wasting my time. Well, you will, because he just raised his hand. <laughs> so there, there is the financial reality of our budget. We have to, I have to deliver a balanced budget to the town council. The town council has to have a balanced budget. Um, we only have so much money in revenue coming in. Um, right now, at this moment in time, I'm about a quarter of a million dollars short in balancing that budget. And that's uh, that's with adding no new positions or anything. That's just steady state. 
So we're looking at cutting to maintain existing services. So, um, you know, I think, you know, thinking about 10 new positions, which is about a million dollars, there's no money there for that. You know, I think, uh, unle you know, but I know what some folks are saying, like, well, let's look at the police department budget. And then that would be the, the proposed uh, funding mechanism for this. You know, I've been listening, of course, with the two positions or four positions, whatever it is that the uh, working group is thinking about. So that would be the range of recommendations, I would think. Um, and then it will be up to me and then up ultimately the town council to determine um, how much we can afford to put into this. So I think that um, the sort of finance, the fiscal realities of our budget, we, there's just no place to pull money from. We have to have a balanced budget um, unless there's grants or something else that's, that's out there. And then and it, and just a different, so anyway, I'll stop there. So I got uh, Ms. Walker, Ms. Owen, and Ms. Pat in that order. Uh, yeah, my question was going to be for Mr. Mr. Bockelman, and it was just going to be, then can we apply for grants in anticipation? Because we know right now that we're not going to have enough money to fund what we want to do. So can we start thinking of what our realistic options will be to get more funding? Because like, yes, I just want to say again, I'm totally into defunding the police and taking that some of that money and moving it over. But if you're saying it's going to be $1 million, million dollars, and we already know that the town council isn't that interested in defunding the police to that extent because they already had that option and chose not to. So where else would we get the money from? That's all that I would want to know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know of grant programs out there that mm. are supporting this work. Okay. Um, I think Ms. Owen, you were next, and then Ms. Pat. So I actually had the same question and I, I was wondering more so, has the town ever applied for grants for any programs that programs or anything like our town council members familiar with that process or? Yes. Mr. So Mr. we do apply for grants and we like we get a, a domestic violence um, grant every year and that, that funds the police department secures that grant for someone who's dedicated to addressing domestic violence and they get a number of other grants um, for opioid and inter intervention and things like that. Um, I don't know all of them. Um, we can, I can get that report, you know, everything that they get for you. Um, but th there aren't a lot of programs out there <clears throat> that I'm aware of that funds this kind of work, unless if, if someone else knows we will apply for it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pat. So uh, Mr. Bachman, um, so the property taxes, uh, the major revenue. What about marijuana um, mm -hmm. revenue? Is that included when you do your budget? No. Well, the mar there's two sources for marijuana revenue. It's a very good point, Ms. Pat. So there's a there's a tax that comes in, and that goes into the sort of into the mix as we're trying to build our budget. But there's also um, um, community, oh God, I can't think of what they're, they're, they're fees that come in, they, they, uh, community impact fees. So that's money that is not been allocated for anything. So that would be a logical thing to identify. Um, the council has not decided how it wants to allocate those funds. This would be a very good thing for that, for us to look at for that. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. So the meal tax mm -hmm. and lodging tax, is yep. that also, yeah, do you consider that when you do your budget? Yes, we do. So you consider that? That's considered income, yes. Okay, so um, I will try to be tactful about this. I'm feeling that what is the point of creating this group if the harsh reality is we will not be able to fund them? Are we just wasting our time doing this? This is just another exercise. Is it, you know, it's the community, some community members' prediction coming to fruition because people have been skeptical about this group all along. And I keep telling people like, give us a chance. Let's just do this. Let's, let's present this to the uh, town council. And people, I, I, I've heard people say, good luck Pat and your group. So where do we go from here? If you know, we're not going to have funding to do mm -hmm. some of this work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm throwing this question to everybody and anybody is free to respond. Let me let me just get back in the queue here. I think it was Ms. Walker and then Ms. Bowman and then Mr. Mr. Bauckham. I also have my little hand up too. And oh, Ms. Wow. Bowman does too. Yeah, I call him Ms. Bowman. Uh, you're after Ms. Bowman. 
Um, and then I was just wondering, so, because um, Mr. Bachelman did reference a grant that of a grant that goes to the police department to deal with domestic violence. But if we were to determine that an alternative service should handle domestic violence, then could we apply that grant to an alternative service? Okay, let me, let me just keep going. I wanna make sure I get all the questions in because maybe there's a joint way to do this, uh, respond to it. Uh, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Ferreira. So I agree with Pat um, in that Okay, so if we're doing this work, right, we're trying to defund the police, then that directly means that we're defunding the police. That directly means that we are taking funds from the police. So that means, yeah, I'm sorry, officers, you might have to find another job. You might have to find, you know, we, maybe we can offer you some training and you can do something else with your time. Like, oh, well. Honestly, it's a corrupt system, no matter how you look at it. If we look towards other countries, there are other countries that walk around without guns. They don't have guns because they don't need them because their system was set, not set up the way ours is. We have to be serious about this. Or like, again, I, I feel like, a, you know, what is the point of me being here? Like I'm here because I want there to be actual reform. So that means that as our town manager, you have you are gonna have to be ready to let the police chief know, look, you might lose half your staff. And it's because of the fact that this needs to change. Nothing personal, but this is what it needs to happen in order to fund and make sure that the people that can be helpful rather than hurtful can be can attend to you know these these calls you know what i'm saying like it just it yeah yep that's got it thank you uh miss ferrera and then miss pat okay so you know i know that i've been going in and out so if you can't hear me let me know and i will repeat myself um but again, yeah, I mean, obviously I've already said my sentiment about that and, and I wanna hear more from Mr. Bachman because you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like, if there's no money in the budget to fund this program or any other programs that we'll, we'll be recommending, then that means it's gonna come from somewhere, right? So it needs to come from the police department's um, budget. It needs to come from any other budget. And so what I wanna get from Mr. Bachman is, okay, so what does that amount, uh, uh, you know, what, what's that amount then? All right, that we're playing with, you know, that we need to we need to know because again, if we don't know, you know, what the budget is, then you know how you know what are these recommend recommendations going to be for, right? I mean, I'm still going to be making these these recommendations, though, nonetheless, because what I'm going to do is just showcase. We we need to we need to to make these recommendations because I'm just going to showcase again that this is again a, a situation where we were given a charge. We're kind of coming up with with what exactly you all asked us to do, and now and you know they're going to say there's no budget for it. I mean, what is this about? You know, so I want to know where what money we have, right, that we can budget from, and then yet and still let it be known that yes, I will be and at least in my part, you know, making the the recommendations and 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 saying my opinion in terms of these things because. This this seems really kind of you know, not. It, I want to say ridiculous, but I don't want to say ridiculous because then we should have known right from the beginning that there was no budget. <laughs> Let me go to uh, Miss Pat and then Mr. Bachelman had his hand up and then Miss Owen. I'll pass. Mr. Bachelman. I'll, I'll defer to Miss Owen. Miss Owen. I guess also to kind of kind of piggyback off of what everyone else is saying, I'm interested to know more about how invested the council members are in our charge, because like I, I understand the budget concerns, but if the council members are truly invested in this work, they will start helping us applying for national grants so that we can make this work happen and so that it happens well funded. There's a there, I want a, a couple of comments related to this is I re recall a conversation we had with, uh, with Mr. Bachelman very early on when we were saying we needed more resources to do this work. 
And the response we got was, yeah, you can have the resource. You have to tell us what we, what we need. We have to be very explicit about what we need. You just can't say we need resources to do something. But what are these resources going to be? What are they, how are they going to be used? When are we going to need them? And we put, we put our heads together to make that happen. And uh, at the same time, we knew that there was funding for that. So it was sitting there. We just had to describe what it was. It sounds like we're not sure right now um, whether there's a funding source on the other end. What, what I'm asking myself, and I guess I'm asking, uh, and probably would ask uh, Seven Generation uh, Movement Collective as well, is if other municipalities are doing this, especially other municipalities that look like us. And um, I don't know how many of those other municipalities have budgetary restrictions and uh, restraints around them that they can't do anything, but where are they getting the money from? How are they doing it? And how are they creating a program? Because one of the, if, if we create a program, let's say we create a program that costs a million dollars, but we say it's needed and we put that forth, our job is to put forth a recommendation, a recommendation, and we do that, and then it doesn't go anywhere. Um, that's a very different story than just saying, you know, to me, we need to pull X amount of money out of wherever to create a program because we could underfund ourselves in that way. Mm -hmm. We could just say, we're gonna take money from somewhere and say, we're gonna take these positions from the police or this money from that grant or whatever, and then all of a sudden we say, okay, we have, we have um, 150, maybe we have $300,000. And that doesn't even come close to what uh, an adequate CREST program would look like. So we, in a way, kind of shot ourselves in the foot. You know, our, you know, our challenge to me is, can, can we say what the structure of the program is and how is it going to work most effectively with Amherst? Um, if we were able to do that, then I think we're living up to our charge. One, we're coming up with a recommendation that's doable, it's attainable, and probably sustainable. Um, whether we get support on it or not is another whole question. But I think part of our responsibility is to create the program, create the structure for it, show how it works, and, and push to make it happen. Um, that's, that's, our, that's our work, I believe. Some of the other hands were going up there, and I don't, um, I don't even know who's for you guys. You can't come in as a tie all the time. I can't figure out whose <laughs> hand is going up here. You know, you raise your hand at the same time. So let me let me go back because Mr. Bach, when you pass the first, I'm going to go to you, then Ms. Owen, and then Ms. Walker, please. Okay. So to answer some of the questions. So on the domestic violent grant, violence grant, I don't know if that can be reallocated. Um, it's a joint grant that's done with other communities, and whether it's restricted to police departments or not, that's something we could look into for sure. Um, the um, in terms of, you know, I think, Mr. Wiley, you're right to say, here's what we want. And then I think we'd look at an implementation plan because it doesn't just happen overnight. We have to sort of build the program and see how it works. And I think that's some of the, the vein of Mr. Uh, Vernon Jones's questions, like how did they build their, how did they get to where they were? How did Cambridge get to where they were? It, 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 they know it wasn't just a snap of the fingers and you were there. And then, and I think you're, it's wise for the, the working group to say, here's where we think we need to be. How quickly can we get there? Um, I think one thing you might want to consider is like, what is, what is the need? What, how many calls are we going to be responding to? Are we, you know, is it a thousand a day? Is it 10 a day? Is it two a day? I don't know what, what that answer is. That's a, that's a piece of information you're, you may want to be seeking out. In terms of funding, so it, what, the question was, how committed is the town council? Um, this is one of their goals for me in terms of my performance. So it is a, a value to them. In terms of how they will vote, I can't, I would never predict how the council is going to vote on anything. Um, but their expectation and my expectation is something like this will be included in the budget for FY22. Uh, and that's what we're planning for. Um, in terms of, well, what's the scale of funds should we be expecting? You know, what I've been hearing, I've come into almost all, every one of your meetings, I've always heard, I mean, nobody's ever said anything except the is a two position, we've talked about the two positions, you know, maybe four, that type of thing. And that's sort of what I've been, that's what I've been processing. This is the first I've heard of a 10 position request, but if that's where the working group says we need to get to, that's, you can articulate that. 
Um, and then the last thing is, I think it would be fair for you to ask me, well, tell me about that marijuana money. How much is there? What's it? Uh, what can we use it for? Who else has has um, has dibs on it? Who else is seeking it? There are other people who are saying, you know, the school department is looking, would say, hey, we would like some of that for some of the things that we need. So, but I think it's totally fair for you to ask me. We would like to know about that money. And I think, uh, and I would, I would get you that information. Thank you. Uh, Ms. And Owen, I think I it's think, a, a several hundred sorry. thousand dollars in that range. So Ms. Owen, I, I think you were, were next. You're muted. Mr. Bockelman answered part of my question, but I guess going forward, just to make sure that um, our recommendations are effective, I would want to know more about the budget that's left for our recommendations. So we would not have a rough estimate of how much money we would need from outside grants to make this um, vision of Amherst be realistic and have a possibility of being reality. Because I think these are really big um, recommendations, but that doesn't mean that they're too big, if that makes sense. Um, Ms. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Walker. Um, so, I mean, I, I hear all that, Mr. Bachman. Um, but for, for, for the record, I've always been saying that we need to do an assessment. I've never said two or four positions or anything. I've always said that there needs to be an assessment to see. And I've always said a 24 um, seven um, you know, program. I have not said anything about two or four positions or anything, okay? So that's for the record. But, but two, my thing is this, I, I, I get it, right? I get it that there's budget constraints. I get it that- Can't hear you. Can you hear me? In and out. All right, let me wait a little bit. Can you all hear me now? Yes. So. My thing is that we were given a charge because our community, you know, has been hurting. You know, it has it has a mistrust. You went out again. We still can't hear you. Chat then or something. No, oh, there's no chat function. So, can you hear me now? Yeah. Well last time to kind of try to attempt this. My thing is that we need change now. So now what are we supposed to do in terms of that, right? When, when. Sorry, you're going out again. And we, we can't hear you. I'm, who, I mean, hang on, hang on there for a minute, Ms. Ferreira. Who was that? No, I'm next? saying just move on to the next person. Just and move I'll, on. I'll come person. back to you if I, yeah. but so I forget who was next. Um, Ms. Walker. Can I just, Ms. Ferreira, do you want to email me what you want to say and then I can read it? I'm not sure if that works for you or not. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. Okay. Okay, Ms. Walker. <clears throat> um, so I just then Mr. Vernon Jones after that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to piggyback um, what Brianna said a little bit earlier and that I'm interested in finding out mm -hmm. how committed the um, town council is to our work because I know that they say they have a commitment, but you know, saying that and actually having the commitment are two very different things and what that looks like. And I feel like this process is being really slowed down. And if, if there's a real commitment that people would be acting with urgency and that urgency can look a lot different than what this is looking like right now. Um, because I know like the town, this is our specific charge and the town council has other things they're working on but they can work in collaboration with us to make this happen and I think that that's like what needs to happen so I don't know like I think yes we can make a pilot program and start off small and say this is the dream and this is where we want to be but I think that's almost doing a disservice to our community because then how many people are going to still fall through the cracks and like there's it's still going to be a system where people who need to get help are not going to get help and and those people are gonna fall back onto the police again and they're gonna be in the same position they were in in the first place. And so I think that we need to be a little bit more proactive rather than put out a little and see what happens and reevaluate and, and meet with the town council now. Like, can we give them a presentation? Again, this is what we've been working on. We're hitting a roadblock here because we need to know about our funding. We need to know what's available. Like, if they're really committed, they could say, you know what, we'll look for grants with you. We'll see what else we could do. Or we know how much money we have or, or something like they can offer us something that will help us work through this instead of just being at a roadblock or making hypothetical 
suggestions that maybe if we have money, we can do this. Like, what can we really do really right now? And how can they help us get there? So I think we need to be in more direct communication than the, with the town council, if that's possible, because I think sending Mr. Bachelman back and forth isn't really that effective. And I think they need to hear it from us that this is what we need. And this is the work we've done so far. And this is where we're at, because I feel like we're hitting a blocker here. And I, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of more time coming up with a robust idea that's going to be thrown in the trash for a pilot program that's going to fall off and that people are still going to be out being harmed when we put in so much hard work. And so I, I just want to see if there's if there's a different way we can do this than just put out a little bit, a little bit and keep waiting because we also don't have that much time. Um, who was, um, I think Mr. Vernon Jones, then Ms. Pat. And then Ms. Moyston. We, I think we need to know, get some better data, right, as quickly as we can uh, about the number of calls and what time of day they come in uh, that would be field, fielded by a CREST program. Uh, we're not in a position to fully advocate publicly for this program until we have that data. Uh, and I'm not sure we can do the best possible job of designing the program without some of that data. But if, you know, if we already have two police salaries, if there's several thousand, hundred thousand dollars in the community impact fees, and there's presumably the potential of an additional reduction in the police budget, uh, I don't see any reason why we can't move forward uh, with a pretty full implementation, even if we don't get everything in the first year, we should get a, you know, be able to get a very significant program. You know, if Olympia is bigger and is doing it with six positions, we should at least be able to get six positions in the first year. And if we need to grow it uh, beyond that, that'd be fine. But we could make, I, I think we want to go for big, big changes. And I think we want some more data right away. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Pat. <clears throat> so a couple of things. I think we need to be careful about wanting to collect data. I know that some BIPOC community, and I can't speak for everybody, would rather not call the police because of experiences they've had in the past. So we have to be careful not to rely on data that is available. The second thing is that I want to remind all of us that the APD uh, budget is the highest in this town because of um, overtime pay and everything. So to hear that we may not be able to fund some of our recommendation just doesn't um, sit in well with me because the police are supposed to serve armors. It's not serving BIPOC community very well. And we're here, here we are trying to recommend alternative services that will actually benefit a BIPOC community and we're saying we don't have money. Let's take that money from the police. They have too much budget and they're not benefiting a segment of this community. And so we just have to make it happen by taking money away. I don't have any problem reducing a police budget significantly. One, one thing I, in response to that, yes, and, um, you know, we, we talk all the time about this group making a statement and, and being, you know, very proactive, if you will, about this. The, the, the best thing we can do, and, you know, whatever data we can, we can collect, fine, but um, our best statement would be to describe in very clear language to the town of Amherst that this is what the structure of this program looks like, this is what it, it, it needs to um, to function properly and effectively for our people, especially our BIPOC people. And this is what it's going to take. And here's the estimated cost of it. Um, that's where I think we establish ourselves as a credible group. We talk about exactly what we need. We describe exactly how it should be working. And then we put that out there. That's our, I think our responsibility. And what, you know, I, there, there could be positions that, that we can take money from. There very well could be. But I 
think we base it on our on what we feel we need rather than what somebody else has or doesn't have. That, that's that's my own known sense of it. Uh, Ms. Walker and then and Ms. Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Um, Ms. Owen. Um, so I just wanted to say two things. One to Mr. Vernon Jones. I think though, although I agree with Pat that the data doesn't tell the true story, I think we have that data from defund 413. They had the call log and they did send us that data. Um, so I think I, we just need a more thorough review of it, but I do think that data is already available to us. Um, and then also to just go off of what Ms. Pat said, like I'm thinking about like if we can't get budget from anywhere else and our option is only to work within the parameters that already exist in our budget, like would you rather have an overfunded, overfunded police department with no social services or an overfunded social services program with an underfunded police department? Like what is better? And I think that's clear here. So like, I don't really know what <laughs> the hesitation is there. Like hmm. who even cares underfund the police department? They are clearly doing harm in our community. They yep. will be there and they can be underfunded. Our community needs to be overfunded right now. That is what needs to happen. So we need to figure out how to make that happen. And if there needs to be some convincing to the town council, can we do a presentation to them? Like, well, I, I'm trying to figure out what we can do because I don't think, like, like I'm gonna say again, if we create a small pilot program, who is going to fall through the cracks? The same people that are falling through the cracks right now. The people who don't speak the, the, the language, the people who are afraid of the police and afraid of contacting services or, or people, you know, if there's high response, like the white, white affluent people with mental health issues are going to get attended to before the BIPOC community and they're still going to be suffering. And so I want to see this work. And I, I'm really afraid that we're going to create something that still allows the people we're trying to reach to fall through the cracks. Ms. Sohn, were you next? Uh, yeah. And then um, Ms. No, Bowman. And, and oh, maybe Ms. Bowen was before me. Ms. Sorry. Bowman, oh, then, then Ms. Owen, then Ms. Moishton. So I wholeheartedly agree with Alicia. Um, and I go back to saying, like, what are we doing? Like, we, the schools need this money and we need this money. And like I said, we, dump the mo we take the money, we dump it into social services and then, you know, those officers have an opportunity to go and learn something about social services. And maybe if they want to be a cop in another town, they can do that. And they can utilize the information that they got training, you know, because we changed the, the tone of what we're doing in this, in this area. But the other thing that I haven't heard about are the students because they do you, UMass Amherst students directly affect the town of Amherst in a way that Amherst College and Hampshire College don't affect the town. So we should be asking UMass for money too. We should be going and being like, you guys need to give us money too because we, this needs to happen. You know, your students who are getting drunk out, you know, out here they also are going to need social services. So it's tapping into more of our, our, our community. We need, this needs to happen yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, I don't say much because I get so frustrated because of what I see is a lot of tiptoeing around a ridiculous subject. We all know the results of police in these communities. They are, it did, the whole system was built on racism. It was built on keeping people of color down, in particular black people. And we're tiptoeing around the subject, like it's like, oh, we have all week, we have all this, we have all that. We don't have time for all of this. It needs, it need, we need to make some real change now. And we need to really like, like for me, I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't know if I should do this anymore because I'm, I'm starting to have anxiety coming because I don't see, like I don't, there's no steps being made. Like there's just no steps being made. And it's so frustrating. I'm taking time away from my family. I'm taking time because I believe that Amherst has a chance to be on the forefront of this movement. And it to be really successful in Amherst and hopefully get a lot of people to put action into their Black Lives Matter sign that they have on their lawn, but they're not really doing anything. We need to hold this community to task. That's it. 
Okay, let me let me move forward here. We got we're hitting the wall with time here, but there's more comments uh, that need to be made. Um, Ms. Owen and then Ms. Moyson, I think you had your hand up for a while. Yeah, so I completely agree with Ms. Walker and Ms. Bowman. And also I do think communicating with the town council would be really effective to make sure our recommendations do become reality. And I just want to say defunding the police in Amherst is not unrealistic given the funding that UMass, the UMass Police Department receives and how they openly talk about how they work with local police departments. Every time I go on a drive out of my house in North Amherst, I always see police. This is a town that is way over policed and that money could be poured back into the community. Ms. Moyston. Sorry about that. A couple of things. One, I want to read um, Ms. Ferreira's email that she sent which is, we were given a charge. Our community has communicated time and time again that they want change now. So how can we tell our community to wait? The recommendations that we are making need to be put into place now. And for me, for her, I had always stated that we need to fund this program fully, not just as a pilot program. Time is waiting. The time for waiting is over. The town needs to find the money and take the money from the police department. So did I capture that right, Ms. Ferreira? I don't know if she'll be able to. She's muted. Yeah, muted. Um, so the other pieces too is, um, I won't comment on the police department and that piece of the funding, but I, what I will say is that there are um, other ways that not that it would fully fund it, but we have to come up with some creative ways of finding funding as well. And when I say we, I don't really know who I'm talking about. Somebody needs to find creative ways, whether it's the community safety working group, the town council collaboration, or whatever the those purposes are. And there are already programs that I don't know how it would work if you can get grants that to work with already existing programs and to implement them into to this program. But also, um, Ms. Glazer just sent over an email stating that the Medicaid or Medicare has been been able to be charged. This bill called the Cahoots. There is a bill called the Cahoots bill in, in Congress that would enable Medicare to be used for some responder fees. So it's really about doing the research also too. I'm not, and again, I'm not making any comment on the police department and their budget because I can't. But what I'm saying is there are still other ways that we can still make this happen or that you guys can still make this happen. And I think it's very important that you guys know exactly what it is that you want to present to the council so that it's taken seriously. And that's it. That's, that's the point. I, I, I think I was trying to get to where we, you know, it's like you walk into a car deal and you say, I want a new car. You, you, you're going to describe the car you want. You're going to say what's in it. And you're going to, and they're going to put a price on it. And I think that's what we have to do. We we have to create this 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 story. We have to present this thing in really clear terms to people who have not seen this before. We have to present it the way it is, the way it is for Amherst, the way we think it needs, and and that is going to be the message. Um, because at some point we say, you know, we can we can meet with the town council. We can talk to them. We can tell them, hey. You want you to follow our recommendations. And at one point that somebody might ask it, what kind of car do you want? And I, I'd like to be able to answer that before I get in the door. But to have them see something, have us see something that said, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is what we need. This is what we, we're, we're, we're putting together. This is the structure we need for Amherst. And make, make, make that clear. I think if we're not clear, if we're not clear with what we're supposed to be doing, then it's going to be hard to get anybody else clear on what we're doing. Ms. Walker, and then Ms. Bowman. Um, I mean, I also agree, Mr. Riley, but I also feel like when you go to buy a car, you know what your budget is. So, like, we what what are we going to do here if we if they're offering us ten thousand dollars or if they're offering us ten million dollars? Those are two completely different visions we can have for our community. And so, I think we need a realistic idea before we continue this work. We can't just go all the way to the end and then 
meet the town council and have them tell us, oh, nope, sorry, we actually don't have the funds for that at all. And that's never going to happen. Like, I think we should do it now, meet with them now so that we can direct, uh, we can have some more direction for our work moving forward. And um, I also think that it's not supposed to be our job to look for grants and that we should meet with the town council because if they're invested in this work, that can be something that they can look into and should start looking into now. And so like time is of the essence. And I think if we're going to meet with the town council, we should just say it and do it. And I, I don't think we should really like, I, I don't know. I feel like we need to just do something and, and get more options here. Cause we're just going to talk about this over and over again and not actually get anywhere and just waste time. Cause there's whole weeks pass in between every meeting that we have. And we're just pushing further and further closer to the date for the budget. So <laughs> I think we should meet with the town council. I think we should ask them or somebody else to be looking into grants for us immediately um, because we don't get paid for that. And that's extra work and it needs to happen, I think, because if, if like, I, I just don't know, we were gonna need more money. So if we, we need to utilize all of our options right now. And if it's gonna be an option at some point to talk about defunding the police, but we're not at that point right now, we should start looking for grants or other ways to get the money. Ms. Pat. So just, I want to thank Ms. Glaser for the email that she sent. I'm, I'm aware of this, but I didn't want to raise it all along. I don't want Hold us on. to- Ms. Pat, I'm sorry. I was actually after Alicia. Oh, okay. I'm Can sorry. I finish up? Do you mind? I, I really- Okay, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So here, here's- There's a couple. There's a. I, I. I'm really frustrated because I. What I. What I am hearing again and again and again is we are going to tiptoe through this. This is not a situation to tiptoe through. And I'm gonna say it as honestly and as straightforward as I can. Part of our charge is to offer recommendations regarding defunding the police. That is part of. That is part of what like what we are looking at here. So if we're, if we're trying to fund other programs, the first thing that we need to do is defund the police and decide how much we need for these programs that we're trying to push through, how much money we need. And then we need to look to the police department first and be like, okay, so this is what we want from you guys. If you're not going to be willing to do that, then we're not defunding the police. And we're just being here. This is a joke. This is ridiculous. First people we need to address this issue with, aside from the town council who needs to be part of it because they do not represent my community. We need to be looking at situations. We need to be talking with them and be like, look, this is what's gonna happen. You guys can be on board in helping that happen, or this is like, but this is a recommendation that's coming your way. And you need you, they already know it. They know it. Like any, I'm sure there's people watching it right now. So please, can we like seriously stop showing, stop saying, oh, we're gonna find grants here. We're gonna find grants there. The police have money. They have money. They're way overfunded. Let UMass <clears throat> conduct, deal with the police money or whatever, or we need to get money from them too. I don't know, but the point is, is that we're looking for money first at the police department. Everywhere else, that bonus. But we we're defunding the police. That's why I'm, that's part of the reason why I'm here. That is important. Have to ask, and that money should be re-geared towards our program, whatever those recommendations come down to be. But please stop tiptoeing over this. This is that's it's it's deep. I feel like it's what we do as a community constantly to save people from getting their feelings hurt. Start hurting some feelings because nobody's caring about the the our community. They don't. And I'm just so frustrated with this, this this town. Just like, oh, oh, let's not make let's not make everybody upset. No, I want people upset with me. I want people not to like me because if that means my community is gonna be a better community, so be it. So that's all I have to say. And I'm actually getting off the call because I'm exhausted. So um, thank you all. All right, Miss Bowman, thank you. Thank you, Miss Bowman. Okay, Miss so, Pat, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. So I'm glad that Ms. Uh, uh, Glacia, is that her name, that sent email to us. Um, I am aware about Medicare and Medicaid funding. I deal with Medicaid myself all the time in my job, almost every single, almost every single day. 
I just want to caution the programs and services we're recommending. If you are not quote unquote clinically licensed, you don't get funded by this uh, public insurance. This is the point I want to make. You have to be a licensed social worker, a licensed psychologist, a licensed uh, nurse. That's how my company is able to get funding, for example. You have to have a licensed clinical worker to get funding. And I just want to put that out so that we don't just say, oh, we're just going to get money from uh, Medicaid, Mass Health. It doesn't work like that. That's all I have to say. Okay. Who, who was next? I had wrote a note there and I took my hand off the screen. Was it Ms. Walker or? or it was Ms. You, Walker. Ms. Walker, and then I think Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Owen. No, um, Ms. Owen's ahead of me. Ms. Owen, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Walker. Yep, I just wanted to add to what Ms. Anonabaka was just saying and I also agree. And also um, access to healthcare is a barrier. So we're just missing a huge population there. If people don't have healthcare, then they can't get service. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the way. Ms. Owen, thank you. Ms. Owen? Uh, Mr. Bachelman, I'm sure you know that, I mean, you know the town council more than I do. Do you genuinely believe the best way to make the things that we're envisioning happen are recommendations or what do you think the best way to make this happen <laughs> looks like? Yes, Mr. Bachelman. So so the, the process, um, the way our charter is set up, which governs how we operate is that the town manager makes the budget um, presentation to the count to the council I think the town council would welcome your presentation directly I think that they would expect that I think they totally expect it once you're at a point where you feel like you're ready to make a presentation on your work um, you know I think the work that you have outlined in the charge are two stages one is the um, alternative forms which is what we're really talking about now and then the other is the the next the next phase after we get through this you know what's this alternative form of um, services, community safety services that we're gonna look at. Um, I mean, the, the, sort of, the sort of blunt budget realities that we face is that we don't have enough money to, to basically do what we're doing now. And that's the challenge with, all the, with everything that's happening. You know, the schools are making cuts in their budget. And, and, but I think what you're saying, what I'm hearing from members, not all the members, but many members is that, no, there is money. It just happens to be in the wrong department. It's in the police department, not in the department we want. And I think it's totally legitimate for you to make that recommendation to say, this is what we think you need, should be doing and set that as a priority. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think, I, I think I, I think you do need to focus on data. Like, how many calls are we talking about? How you know, if we want coverage, coverage twenty four seven, seven days a week, how many people does that entail? Because you have vacations that you have to plug into that and all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So, if we suppose we want twenty four seven, seven days a week for X number of people at a on a shift, but and then then the, then the follow up question, and and hopefully we do have this. I haven't seen the information on the call analysis, but it'd be wise, and then. And I think you've made a really good point that not all the calls that come in 911 is the total universe of calls. You have another subset of those that won't call 911. And maybe there's, mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many that is. Is it 10%, 20%, 30%? I don't know. But make some assumptions about that. So I think, you know, is again, I would say here's here's the calls we think could be addressed. Um, and, you know, again, figure out like how many people we would, if you if you say say we want it 24 hours a day, Let's let's move in that direction, and I think you should just be, be re saying what you think should happen. Yeah, Mr. Vernon Jones was next, and then Ms. Moisten. Yeah, I think we've made an important decision tonight. We've decided we do not want to start small. We do not want to start with a pilot program. We want to start with a program that meets the needs. And I think our job is to describe that program, and then ask Mr. Bachman and the town staff to figure out what would it cost to do that program. Uh, and where could the money come from? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Mr. Bachelman will have to decide whether he's going to recommend all the money in the first year or not, but we get to ask for the program we want uh, and ask him, I mean, where, where can the money come from? Um, grants are great if you can get them, but this is this kind of program. A lot of towns are all trying to start this at once. Mm -hmm. And that's not the kind of thing that usually gets a lot of grant funding. And if the program is based on grant funding, the grant may only last a year or two. And then, then you don't have it built into the budget. So you haven't really built a yeah. permanent program. 
So I'd much rather build this program around money that's in the budget uh, and go forward in the biggest way we can. I, I agree. And I think I agree. That, that, that was my, my, my point. We, we have to state our case. We, we have to state our case. It's got to be clear to everybody. You got to tell them exactly what we need. And, um, you know, and, and, how, and what, how, it, how, it, how it looks and how it's supposed to be performing. I think that's going to be the message. And, you know, I, you know, in terms of what Mr. Vernon Jones is saying, that's, that's, if we don't do that, then we're, we're going to be talking to the air, you know, because we won't have anything to, you won't have anything to show or, or describe. Uh, Ms. Moyston was next, and then I think Ms. Ms. Uh, Walker. Yeah, so I'm going to read another statement from Deb Ferreira again. And um, so she, we cannot curtail our recommendations because of the budget. If we did that, then we would be doing a disservice to our town and shortchange this working group. When we were charged, the charge wasn't to make sure we made make recommendations that fit the budget. Then we should have been told that initially. Does this town actually want change? Does this town want to address their issues that our residents have, especially BIPOC residents? Can we get a clear message that we can make our full recommendations and that we will be getting the funding wherever we can, starting with getting the funding from the police and going from there? Because if not, then what are we doing here? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Walker. Um, thank you, Ms. Moyston, and thank you, Deborah. I think that was um, like, I have the same question here, um, but what I'm wondering, so I also thank uh, Mr. Vernon Jones for bringing a summary. I think that was a great summary of everything that we've been talking about tonight, but that I'm just still confused and wondering why we can't do this in collaboration with the town council, because I still think we're doing a disservice, like just going all the way to the end and then presenting our full list of recommendations, because then we're at the end of the budget and the deadline, and then we'll be met with whatever the town council says, instead of meeting with them now with anticipation so that they can know that we're going to need a large budget for this because I'm not sure if we've met, we met with them a while back, but that was in the very beginning of our work. And I don't think we had as nearly as much information as we have now. And I don't know if they have a realistic even idea to anticipate what it, we're going to be asking for. And if they don't, they're not even anticipating it and we don't present it until like a day before the budget has to be approved, then I don't get how we're gonna realistically expect for that to happen. And then we're, 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 we're looking at this being pushed off realistically a whole nother year. If we're just doing the whole process, putting out the recommendations and not doing this in collaboration with the people who will be funding it. Like, I, I just don't really understand why we can't be meeting with them simultaneously or getting feedback from them during this process. Uh, Ms. Moyston. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Mm -hmm. um, so Ms. Freyer also adds that grants can drive and funding needs to be built into the budget. Yeah, clear. So Mr. Bachman, and I, I want to kind of bring this to a close too, because I think we're, we're at a point. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones for offering that, that summary. But um, um, would it breach our charge if we were to uh, make our, a pre-recommendation statement to the town council? And uh, I'm going back to what Ms. Walker was making the point about to um, say, we're moving in this direction kind of thing. Does that serve any purpose? Is there any utility doing that? Uh, does, it, does, it, does it help or hinder our cause, if you will? Um, what 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 would you say about that, and just in general? So there are two meetings of the council uh, prior to when you need to complete the work that the consulting. I mean, assuming you have the consulting group to support to help you give you information to make your decisions. Right. Um, so there 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 are council meetings on the fifth and the twelfth of April, and. Um, so, I mean, I think the chair could reach out to the council president and said, we'd like to make a, dis you know, we'd like to give you an update on where we are. Um, you could do that in writing. You could put together something in writing to alert. I think it's it's probably, I, I don't know if the council, I mean, some counselors have attended your meetings, but to, and well, I'm not sure what they, I don't know if they've 
thought about what the scope of the request or the recommendation is going to be. Uh, technically, the recommendation is to the town manager, then the town manager submits right. the budget, then the, but then, the, then the budget's approved or not approved um, by the council. Um, so, um, but I think it, I don't think anything would hinder you. I think being out there and saying what you want is the right thing to do. And, um, uh, and if you want to do that at a council meeting, or if you want to do that in writing, I would, that would be something you want to consult with the town council president on. I think certainly, so the council has to approve the budget. They, I give them the budget on May 1. They have to approve it by June 30th. They have a two month right. window there. So there's room in there. They have to pu have required public hearings and stuff like that too, so. Well, in, in, in response to all the commentary that, that we've had tonight and the sharing of information, um, I would like to put something in writing to the, the town beforehand. Um, and you know, get that to the town chair in some fashion. What I would, what I'd like to ask is if a couple of members of the uh, of our group might want to collaborate and uh, draft a statement uh, to the, uh, the the town council chair that um, you know we we could vet uh, internally and then get it off to them in a timely manner. I could be a part of it certainly because I'm going to be the one that's going to contact. But um, Ms. Walker, um, I would be happy to be a part of it, but I also just have a question on what exactly the content of that message would be. That would be something that you and whoever you're working with is going to come up with. <laughs> but we don't have like a general idea as a group because I think like, are we going to be specific about the stuff that we've been doing? Are we just going to talk about the fact that we want more money? Like, do we want it to be a full inclusive thing or do we want it to be an ask? Do we want it to be an update? Like, I just don't really have a clear idea of where we're, where exactly we're going with the message. Um, you know, I, honestly, and I, I don't mean to be slight on this, it, it could incorporate all of those things in some fashion. I, I think, you know, we, we're clearly not in the, we're clearly not in the point where we want to recommend, make a recommendation to the town for a program yet. But we do, even if you listening to this conversation we just had tonight, there, there is some, we're, we're, we're feeling some trepidation on our part. You know, we're, we're worried that this is a lot of work going into this. And we are talking about, um, uh, you know, getting money from the town to fund this. I, I don't know exactly the words that would go into it right at this particular moment, but certainly I, you know, I could see having this conversation with several of us and seeing if we can come up with something that would say to them, look, uh, something big is coming and it, it's important and it, it fits into the town's mission. Uh, it fits into the, the, the uh, town manager's mission. It fits into our mission as a community. I don't know. I'm just saying, I, 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 but I'd like to make sure if we have an opportunity and it's not going to hinder or hurt us, certainly, uh, that we be able to get them something. So, Ms. Moyston. So, Ms. Ferreira says that she agrees and sh that we should put something in writing to the town council and that she is willing to collaborate on a draft with Mr. Wiley and anyone else. Well, what, what I would ask is this, I mean, if, if first of all, it, is, is this something that the, the, the group wants to do by a show of thumbs up or something, hands up or something? Oh. My hands up for Ms. Ferreira, or she's got it, yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, she's there, she is. And Ms. Pat, you had a question? Well, I'm thinking about the timing. I feel that the, the, the stuff that Mr. Ross put together for us, we didn't have a chance to look at all of them. We only did one, two, three. We haven't, we didn't even complete everything. So what is it that we're going to be, you know, writing to town council? I feel that we didn't complete what we're supposed to do tonight in terms of, um, so I'm, I'm not sure if we're ready to write something to the town council. Yes, I want us to do it, but I think we need to have a bigger picture of what, the whole program and services is going, is going to cost and not just the crest. Because there are other um, programs that I'm hearing that people really want. Our teenagers want community center. We haven't even discussed that. So mm -hmm. I'm hesitant that it's too early for us to um, write to the town council is my point. 
Okay. Well, if if we don't, then then we're we're back to creating the actual document that we want to start putting together, and um, they will not hear. They won't hear from us be, beforehand. We'll be working on that for a while, I'm sure, because we're working with our consultants as well. Miss Miss Owen. Um, do you guys think it would be a better idea if the town council gave us the space to put together a small presentation on the ideas that we're thinking and what we're hearing from the community and what the community wants? Or is that too premature until we finish out, until we have more concrete ideas? Ms. Walker? I'm sorry, I don't have like a direct answer to you, Brianna, but more of like um, a follow up to what Ms. Pat said. Um, and that I'm just thinking because I, I, one, I do think it's a good idea to get something to the town council because I want them to have anticipation to what we're doing and not for it to just like blindside them if they have no idea um, as to what we're thinking. But I also do see the value in waiting to include other topics because we may come up with something very similar, but as to a different portion of our recommendations where we might need some follow-up or feedback or communication with the town council in regards to, but I'm wondering if we can just send them some type of line and leave it as an open line of communication. Like we had a meeting tonight and this is where we're at. We anticipate having more follow-up to this message because as we continue discussing our recommendation, but it's clear at this time that we're having concerns about the budget or something along those lines, because I do also agree with Ms. Pat that as we continue to talk about this, we may have other things that we're gonna miss if we just write to them right now. Ms. Pat? Great idea. My only concern is that if we do this haphazardly, and I'm talking from somebody who have created business, created programs, if we're not very thoughtful in sending something to the town council, we will just you know, make fun of, um, I don't want to use the word fun, but I want mm -hmm. us to do this deliberately. I'm a budget woman. I'm a, I like numbers to work with numbers. And I think if we can come up with, you know, rough, you know, bulk of what we're talking about, then I'll be comfortable, comfortable for us to send something to the town council. I kind of want to be part of the subcommittee, but I don't want to, but I'm happy to send something to the subcommittee as to my suggestion about what I think, you know, some of the services or programs might cost. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not too hard. You can, yeah, you know, to, to figure out that with health benefit, with um, vacation time, you know, look at what other towns are paying comparatively, what the police are getting for pay for certain positions. You know, I can put those numbers together for whoever subcommittee are going to do. You know, the um, youth program, I would like that be included as well. So I'm not into the writing aspect, but I can provide, you know, numbers for the subgroup is what I'm trying to say. What, what if we, what if we, we do this? Because we, we, you know, we, we, we do need to communicate with the town. And I, I don't think we should be too concerned necessarily about how much or what the content, I don't want to undermine this, but not fully what the content is, but the urgency around this for us is important for the town to know because we're, we're feeling the urgency of it as we begin working forward. I would suggest that if uh, the entire committee, the entire working group, anyone on the working group could submit their thoughts on what would go into a commentary at this point to the town. I don't know when we would do it, um, but we can get that to uh, whoever's work would like to work with me and others. Uh, you missed, did somebody, who said they would work on this? Miss, Miss Walker? And Miss Ferreira. And Miss Ferreira, the, the three of us could put a draft something together and run it back by you all and say, does this make sense to say at this point, is it inclusive enough of the sentiment and the comments that we wanted, to, and it, is it going to have? If it's going to, is it going to be a stepping stone for us to build a closer relationship with them in a very short period of time to 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 build this program? Um, because right now we 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 don't know what this is going to cost. We really don't, Miss Walker. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good idea. I just 
Uh, we only have two meetings before I think the 6th of April also. So I just think we should do that as quickly as possible because the time and then um, <coughs> also, sorry, I lost my train of thought there, hmm. but I'll raise my hand again if it comes back to me. Well, it's getting late. We're all getting fatigued. I think they're <laughs> a little bit brain dead here. Sorry. You thought, of, you thought of it. Okay, go ahead. Wondering it, In our data collection at some point, did we get um, did we collect the budget line by line? What is our budget currently somewhere? Do we have that document? Because I think that will be helpful also for me to see and look at just to be mindful of everything, but also to write to the town council. Our, our budget? Meaning yeah, our, like our current budget line by line, like what our current budget is right now for the town. Oh, town budget. Oh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not us, the CSG. Yeah, I, I can. What do you think, Paul? Budget books? From FY twenty one, it, it's all on the on the website. Yeah. I can send you okay. the link for it. Okay, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I was just thinking we, if we communicate with the town council, we should remember that they're not in a position to make the budget. For the most part, they're not in a position to make the budget larger. Most of their decisions are going to be about how much money goes where and how it gets allocated, uh, and they're going to be. They already know it's a problem. That they don't have enough money to keep everything going the way they'd like to. Um, and they're going to be wondering, how's the town manager going to do this? How's he going to make all this fit? Uh, so I think it's great to, to let them know that we're talking about some significant changes uh, that are going to require reallocation of funds um, in a very significant way. Um, but I don't think we need to come up with with numbers, uh, you know, before we, we I don't make think we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ms. Moiston. Um, Ms. Ferreira says we need to say a buy when to get commentary from our group and then when the subcommittee can share a draft with our group for them to review prior to sharing with the town council. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I would say, you know, it, it, while it's fresh on our mind, if, if folks can, uh, uh, send some information through Ms. Moyston to uh, uh, Ms. Walker, uh, Ms. Ferreira, and, and me. Um, if, if the group doesn't mind, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start a working draft and the three of us can uh, start working on it together um, and incorporate what you're saying to us and see if it, see if it makes sense. Because, you know, so I'm just going back to, we, we have to submit this budget to, to Mr. Bauckham ultimately. So we also want to be real clear that our, you know, this is, this is our responsibility. We want to get the town certainly hearing, hearing the, the, uh, the sentiments early if we can in our community, you know, we're going to hear from our community. So we're going to learn more as we said, Ms. Patton in, in a short time, that's going to uh, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Pat. Sorry. I just wanted to say, because I, I actually have to hop off the call now. My kids are having conflict upstairs, but, um, I just wanted to thank everybody for this call tonight because I think this was really important and we had a very good conversation. And I just wanted to remind everybody in the group that it's also very important to take care of yourselves and that this work is hard and can be harmful. Um, and so I just wanna remind everybody to be mindful of that and to make time for like happy and healing spaces for yourself, especially when you're doing this kind of work because there's a lot of really deep emotion and feeling that goes into this work, especially when it's like really something that is so connected to your personal identity. So Absolutely. I just wanted to thank you all for the call tonight and goodbye. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, thank thank you, for, you. for the you. advice. As thank young you. as you are, thank you. Oh, also, sorry, because I do want to be a part of the subcommittee if possible. If you guys can just send me an email update as to what you decide to do with it, that would be awesome. Yes. Thank you. We'll communicate. Yeah, okay, so just a Yes, Ms. Pat. I want to be clear. So we're saying no, not to add any data, no, no money budget yet, right? Is that what I heard from Mr. Ross, that we shouldn't be putting money to any of the services right now when we send the letter to the town council? Is that what I heard from you? Mr. Vernon Jones? That was, that was my suggestion. One, I'm not, as you said earlier, I'm not sure we're ready with numbers. And two, <laughs> What, but they, what they really need to know are they're going to need to make some significant reallocations and take money from one place and put it to what we're doing. 
Okay, so I'm okay with that. That I would like to see everything that everybody has suggested in terms of services included in the letter that will be sent to town council. Okay. I'm okay with that. If we don't put in money right now, like what we think it was going to cost, I'm okay with that right now. But as long as we put everything, including youth, youth center, all that stuff in, when we send the letter to the town council, we shouldn't leave any program out. Then I'll be okay with it. When we get, we'll get to that. We'll, when we get to a, a, um, a draft of this thing, Ms. Pat, we'll send it out to the whole group and say, is, is this it? Is this where we need to be? You know, and uh, we can do some fine tuning if we need to, but that's, that will be, that would be our responsibility to do that. Um, so that was lively. <laughs> and important for sure. Um, so thank you all for that. And I think we're going to end, we're going to end the meeting very shortly. I'm going to ask that we, uh, I'm going to ask the committee with respect to the um, uh, planning for the meeting with um, the uh, Chief Livingstone that uh, if you haven't done so already, you know, please comment on the, uh, the, the document that uh, I sent out earlier, which talked about a potential format for a meeting with the chief. Please make some commentary on that. That's clearly something that can happen at, at any time when we decide. Uh, chief Livingstone has said he's, he's available um, um, whenever we want him to come. So right now we've got a lot of irons in the fire right now. And, um, but the sooner I get that information back, the, the, the quicker we can come to something that we could send uh, to him in the event that we meet with him in the future. So that's the only thing I would ask. Um, and beyond that, I'm just going to move forward. Um, are there any upcoming events? You don't have any, Miss Moyston, tonight? Um, so we, I just, I know for a hundred percent sure that Juneteenth is going to be a, yeah. a very big event this year. So um, if you know BIPOC vendors as in food or entertainment or folks who are artists or who just have products or items to sell, let me know, please. I'd greatly appreciate it. So um, the Civil War plaques will be out on display that day um, for Juneteenth. Then, you know, it, it's a four location event. So it's going to be pretty fantastic. Ms. Pat can cook. <laughs> yes, she can. Yeah. Yes, I can. I can still cook. <laughs> that, that I heard, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, our next meeting, next um, Wednesday, same time, 5.30. Um, and please uh, send any agenda items to Ms. Moyston by 1 o'clock on Monday. Um, if you have anything you want to bring up, have us discuss at that time. We will have uh, an update again from our uh, consultant group right at the top of the uh, uh, actions and discussions item uh, segment. And uh, other topics that we need to bring forward and probably put on the agenda right now. Okay, motion to adjourn. No move. Mr. Brown, Jones, thank you. Ms. Pat seconded. Thank you all very much. Uh, our meeting is adjourned at 810. Thank you for the extra time you all put in. Um, very meaningful discussion and um, we're doing the work. So let's just keep some energy. Let's take Ms. Walker's uh, advice on the way out of the door as, as, um, as important. We take care of ourselves. It's hard work. I will bring the healing bell so that we can Take a deep breath and exhale before That's and right. after our meetings. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank Take you for your leadership. Have Thank a good you. night. Thank good you. Good night. Yeah. Thank you.